fight with my best friends. Some people say we have a problem. But every night I make a new best friend. And the only problem is we like having a good time. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, Love Wrestling. It is 8 p.m. It is Thursday night. Pluggo's already dancing. But you know what that means. It is another episode of Between Two Beards. Hope everyone is having a lovely Thursday or Friday, wherever you are. Wherever Whatever it is. day it is. You're having a lovely time. Uh, Pluggo, how are we doing, my friend? I'm doing well, man. I wish I could beat this heat. It is insane. I'm hot. Yeah. I'm Dying sweaty. Dying Dying out here. What a week of wrestling we had. Usually we have all this other stuff to talk about, but I think it's going to be a very wrestling heavy show today. Yeah. yeah slow Spoiler week. alert. Slow week. Not much. Uh... Week. I made an executive decision. Plug up review Star Wars will return next week. Yeah, it's, we're going to push but, that off. Because it's lot such a biggie, busy week, AK. Yeah. I I, yeah, I was going to say, uh, it's not like we're going to, we weren't, we weren't scratching for things to talk yes, about. Yes, this, this week. week Some stuff been went down wild. over the last couple of days. That that we are definitely but how the into. hell are you jpj i'm well you i'm got a well. big game tonight yeah i'm nervous i'm gonna try it's gonna start while we're still while we're still doing this and i'm gonna try to keep my composure because <laughs> if the celtics lose the se- the season is over and they don't uh win the championship <laughs> that i was confident that they were gonna win i'm still i'm pretty confident still I but before, did we put that on the yeah. screen? That the what? comment? That yeah, comment? yeah. You were did you we... were too busy. You were too busy dancing and doing something to not listen. To swags, you make one mistake. You hop on Twitter for thirty two seconds, and all hell breaks loose. My bad, yeah, he, man. He just knows where the bread is buttered in this duo. He just knows it's, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> anyway, but anyway, let's get yes. Down to let's, business, let's get down to business. We got a guest joining us here. We sure do. Soon. Soon. There he, oh, Boom! There it is. Welcome to Between Two Boom. Big Bad Boris in the house. Yeah. What is good, my friend? How are you? Welcome. Thanks for hanging with us. The basketball. I forgot about the basketball. I'm not a big yeah, basketball guy, okay. but I can I can feel the pain of potentially losing a championship. I'm sorry <laughs> to hear that. It's all right. We got we're at home tonight. Backs against the wall, you know. You you hope they rise to the occasion. You hope they I did rise not to the forget occasion. who you were, Ryan. I simply had Twitter up on my screen, and oh, he said, "Did you read the comment?" And I said, "From who?" Because I wasn't looking at the stream yard. God, cut a guy a break anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and you. So, so, big bad boars. Yeah, I know, right? Um, <laughs> So I have terrible well, sports of juju, so I won't wish you any kind of luck because that'll just make everything bad. So okay, I respect that. I am. I don't. I am not a, a crazy. Don't make the championship. Yeah, a lot of my teams do. A lot of my teams do. Uh, but <laughs> I'm not. I, I am superstitious as a sports fan to an extent. I'm not as you know. You hear some stories about superstitious athletes or superstitious sports I'm fans. Bad. I'm You're bad. bad. Okay, I'm kind of oh, yeah. in the middle. Like I have certain things that like I'm like okay. This needs to be like this. I got to be here or things like that. Like, so like, what are some of your, uh, you say you're bad. So like, what are some I, of I, like- I, I like to wear the same Jersey that my team is wearing. Okay. You know, the That's homes, fair. the aways. I got, I got lucky uh, Calgary flames, Lanny McDonald socks. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, is that like I, every I, game socks, uh, with uh, real important games, the Lanny okay. socks fair. come out and, fair, and fair, more fair. often than not, they come through, but not so much this year. All right. Yeah. That's unfortunate. You know, I, my, my team just fired their coach. He went to Las Vegas already. He was the first coach fired, first coach hired. So we probably got that one wrong. I actually liked Bruce Cassidy. I thought he was a good coach. Uh, I don't know why he wasn't the problem. If you give him, if you screw up three drafts in a row, specifically when you have one with three straight first round draft picks and you miss on all three picks, (laughs) I don't know how that's the coach's fault, but anyway, I digress. Hey, you so, know the old uh, saying, you can't fire the players. No, you can't. Um, you know, it's like, geez, Louise. But anyway, we're here to talk about wrestling. Plug up. Where do we want to start, my friend? Oh, my what goodness. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Talk about the 24 7 change. How are, we all feel- how are we all feeling about the 24 7 championship division? I think right Becky now? Lynch should have won it. Was that still think- a thing? 
It is. <laughs> Becky Lynch actually fought for it last week on Raw. Not last week as in this past Monday, a week ago Monday, and she lost. Today. Oh, shout out to Carp. He's she a did. big hockey guy. He could probably come on here and talk hockey. Yeah, for I'm telling look at again. I didn't know it was gonna then that's fine. I can talk a lot of sports. <laughs> there was. It was a terrible decision. He's a good coach. I was very upset about that decision. If it ain't I, Charlie Conway and Adam Banks, I don't know what the hell you're talking <laughs> the about. The mighty bro. ducks, man. The <laughs> mighty ducks. All anyway, right, we, I think we should start with the biggest news of the week. And it's it's, it's still a lot of information is coming out. And Boris, have you noticed? Did you pay attention? Have you seen this Vince McMahon story? I think it is insanity. I've read my my share of it, and I've tried to kind of piece together what's going on. And uh, it's, I mean, the news that Vince McMahon's a big weirdo creep isn't exactly breaking news, but this is no. this is it's a bad look for everybody. Yeah. So so and yeah. So I've been and we chatted about it a little bit last night, me and Plugo. But I was like, yes, the new the news of the behavior coming from Vince McMahon isn't what's shocking to me. Like it's like, oh, all right, yeah, like. Oh, there you go, Calgary Flames. There you go. <laughs> um, is Jerome and Ginla still there? He was a Bru- he was a Bruin for a few years, and he was a damn good Bruin when he was there here too. Go. I know he's you know he was at his flames. height when he put the Flames. Duh. Flames but his uh, his daughter is starting to to make her way up into the really uh, the, the women's hockey. She played for I believe I want to say it was the under eighteen women Canada women's team that just won their nice. championship. So yeah. awesome. That's cool. Yeah. I did not know that. That's Very pretty cool. cool. Very cool. Um, yeah. So the finding out that Vince McMahon, like you said, was kind of a was a creep and not and not the greatest. Ma- I mean, I think we kind of already maybe had those assumptions. So like the behavior of it is not what's shocking to me. I just feel like when you and again, we don't know nearly more stuff will come out, and you know, we don't know nearly as many details as we'll probably know even you know a few days from now probably, but. I'm 37 years old. I've been watching wrestling since I was, you know, five or six. So 30 years or so. And I feel like this is easily, or it could be the biggest threat to like his placement in power in the company and at least my wrestling fandom. You know what I mean? Probably the the biggest since the the steroid steroid trial. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And I, I feel like, you know, the way that these cases, when they come up now, you know, now and things like that, it usually, in most other cases, it leads to some sort of discipline or removal or things of like that. So obviously we'll have to wait till there's more details, but it does feel like this is a story that is going to be like, it could be the beginning of Of maybe the the end of it. Maybe, maybe. Hey, Kyle it said it best, a billionaire uh, having an affair. Big shocker. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Um, but like Carp says in there, like asking the question, like, can he be fired? No, he has voting power. He has all these things. Um, I don't know, to be honest with you, but I do feel like, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's we crazy. Were talking, to- we were talking baseball off the air, and um, didn't this happen to, no, it was football. Was the, 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 the Carolina Panthers. Panthers he had owner. a similar situation. Very similar. And, and he ended up selling the team for a billion dollars. And yeah, because the the know. league basically was like, "Hey, we can't <laughs> forcibly remove you, but we need you to get the hell out of here." And he was like, "All right, I'll sell the." You know what I mean? He was the only difference is, is like Vince, it's, everything ends with Vince. Hello, but Bobby, as a publicly everybody. traded company, there's always you know there's shareholders ways. and stockholders. That you have to answer to. And I think a little piece of information that's kind of flown under the radar is that there may be more of these. And I, th- yeah, I think yeah. that's so when I say the beginning, like when I'm like, oh, this feels like, yes. And again, every case is different. This is us just, you know, we don't have any f- other facts than or what out there. But like in the article itself, like they said the investigation did lead to like other non disclosures, like they found other non disclosures, yeah. which means to tell me that. I, I don't think any of us are going to be shocked if more cases like this potentially come out. And then if all of a sudden this one case turns out that there were multitudes of these type of situations, then even though he's the guy and he has, you know, whatever it is, 75, 80% voting, but whatever crazy number he has at that point, it's like the board of direct, like the guy, the people that own the, like the board of directors is going to be like, okay, it's probably, best for business if he's not in you know if he steps away or he's just not involved anymore 
to kind of avoid the nightmare that could come with. And I think the uh, the like departure this. of Stephanie McMahon, the timing of that becomes a little bit more. Whether that she knew or had any knowledge of it, we mm -hmm. don't know. But it does make that. It was odd when it happened, but it does make it make a lot more sense. And apparently, yeah. there was a lot of stock sold yesterday before the the story broke, which is a mm -hmm. little. I'm no business major by any stretch, but that seems a little fishy as well. So yeah. I think there's going to be a lot more com uh, uh, information come out. But supposedly, he's going to be at SmackDown tomorrow, business as usual. So. Yeah, that's what he said. Business as usual. Business as usual. But that's how that's how Vince has always kind of done it with every little. I don't want to say little and make light of it, but every incident that's ever came up, he's just like, yeah, the show must go on and he's just going to keep on trucking. I, I'd be interested to see how it is. The Stephanie thing was interesting to me. And I mentioned this last night on all Elite sidecast was like, maybe, you know, that is weird. Cause that's her mom that he's essentially having an affair on. Maybe she left because she's pissed and found out about it. Maybe she didn't know about it. And then when she got... But he's admitted to affairs in the past. He did a Playboy yeah. interview years and years ago, and he admitted to that. So this oh, that's, kidding. you know, shouldn't be breaking information either. So. Yeah, I mean, it could be. It's, I'm, it's My weird. thing is... And, like, then you're, and then you're spending company money, um, giving raises, and that's investor money, and that's stock. Yeah, well, and it I think that's where... That's why... Where you're just, yeah, once you start messing with that level of money... That's where, you know, like I'm sure the, some of the some of those stockholders have known that Vince has done some shady stuff in the past, mm -hmm. you know, but this one they were like, oh, three million, three million dollars. That's a lot of money. Well, apparently yeah. the hush money came out of his. Was pocket. it out of his own pocket? But the the doubling of the salary. The, yeah, yeah. Once they, they kind of started having a relationship. That, that's, that's company money. So Yeah. yeah. Man. I don't, anytime you hear the term hush money, it's it's never good. No, no. Oh man, it is. Uh... And I don't want to. I don't want to recklessly speculate until we get all the facts. But I, I do. Like I said, with both of you guys mentioned it. I think this is like the beginning of a very slippery slope. Because if you're willing to drop three million on hush money, was this the this couldn't have been the first time? That, yeah. That's where I'm like, you. Know, it's just it's icky. It's it doesn't make me feel great. I mean, yes, on the surface, and I know we've seen a lot of discourse on Twitter. It's, Oh, everybody has an affair. It's not a big deal. But once you start messing with the WWE money and stock, it gets really messy. And you got to do something. I don't know how you do it. I'm sure there's a way to get him out. If they truly wanted to get him out, there has to be a way to do it where it makes sense. Um, yeah. It's not going to be easy. Vince is known to be a fighter. He fought the steroid trials to the end everything. He's going to fight this Oliver Luck thing until the end. You know, he will he'll lawyer up and just, bleed people oh, yeah. dry yeah That's and for you you know i think in during the steroid stuff they had he had to step away and i i'm pretty sure the contingency plan was jeff jarrett's dad right wasn't he the i think it was yeah it was jerry jarrett I yeah think like he was the plan that if vince yeah. had to go to jail because yeah carp said you know they have to have some sort of plan in place if something happens to vince Maybe now I don't know what that plan would be. What? I think probably only what do you Vayner, guys but I, think? Yeah, what do you guys think? Yeah, if like, it's supposed to be removed oh, I, today. Who would you put in place? Me in charge? Yeah, you, well, you, I think you, it's well, easy. Boris I think it's and you, JB. I'm not talking to anybody else. <laughs> I thought you were talking in the chat. Stop yelling at me. What well, are, you, are you talking creative wise or yeah? I'm gonna, I was gonna say I, I have say, two different answers. I, I would for say each. both because he's ultimately the head of both. So because Nick Khan's back there right now, rubbing yeah. his little hands together. Nick Khan is the business. I'll yeah. be mine soon. Yeah, creative Nick wise, I mean, I mean, who? Because they just let go of a whole bunch of their creative guys. So I don't know who, who's really left. I, I mean, my, there's my a lot initial... of agents, but like, who's writing the show right now? Yeah, that's true. I mean, <sighs> Freddie Prince Jr. You, you, what about yeah? You I love our future boss. Fred yeah, Fred we are making a, a hard boss, push on Twitter that if he if he has a wrestling company. We want to be the official podcast of oh, that wrestling that company. Wrestling. Making a hard they, need, push. they need a commentator, you know. There you go. Oh, there Freddy you go. Fritz? Hey, clip Alex, this. Nick, Alex, Nick, clip this. Let's go. This We're making a hard push. Hard push. We got Boris um, on board. We're money I like now. you guys. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take you with. You're coming with everything. So yeah. We're kidding. We're not kidding. Freddie. My guy, Mr. No, Prince we're, we're going to, he's going to get annoyed by us. He's probably going to block us. But, um, Carp says that he got, that's my guy creatively, and that's because I was Triple H would be my pick for the creative side of things. If you're talking, hey, Vince is gone, and we need someone to be the head of this, I don't think there's one individual you can put there that will be able to handle both sides. Because clearly, 
Nick Nick Khan is Trip, strictly Nick like Khan he would be the business Trip, guy. He's, he's a number guy. question. They clearly don't have the same vision because they completely destroyed NXT under Nick Khan. Yeah, they changed it yeah. to something. So I wonder well, how that would work. It backstage. depends on how you look at that, though. Yeah, that's yes, true. NXT was always Wicked. supposed Welcome to be. To the uh, chat. NXT was always supposed to be a developmental and it got out of hand in the best way because I loved it and now oh, it's kind too. of back to what it was. I always did laugh about how like every single thing that Triple H did, they changed. They it was very dark. Now it's yeah. bright and colorful. It had like hard rock music and now it's got hip hop music. But again, it's back to the developmental. I'm not going to lie and say that I watch it and because I don't really watch a lot of stuff the week to week stuff just because of my time. But yeah. it's back to what it, what it w- was supposed to be in the first mm-hmm. place. Yeah. I don't know if it's any good. But that's what I, the the wrestling for me, uh, and I was li- I was like you, I was a huge Triple H NXT guy, huge, loved it. Um, at one, for a long time, it was easily my favorite product that I was watching on a weekly basis. Um, the wrestling itself and the rest, the perform most of the performers they have down there are still good. Like the the in your house pay per view they had the, well, a couple weeks ago, like the matches and the show was good, but th- it's it's definitely. It's definitely f- for a different type of fan than me. It's not for like it's not yeah. for me. You know what I mean? But the if you're just sitting there objectively, like I just want to watch some wrestling matches, they have bangers. Like they have really good matches still. As soon as they had a wedding, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 yeah, Andy Hartwell, Dexter Loomis. Thing. Apparently, the uh, the NXT UK show was really really good right now. I haven't really checked it. Is out. Is it? I, I, I have, I've been out of that loop in a long time. Ivy Nile and Mito Mito Saddam. I didn't know that they. Yes, I didn't know they fought. Um. Yeah. DJ Wiggins says that Nick Khan will have the company with it two years i think he's aiming I for mean, sooner my man yeah i mean welcome weeks. to the chat my man yeah two weeks <laughs> yeah i was gonna say here. the wwe's problem isn't the in ring when you no. turn on a pay-per-view it's always good matches these are people at the height of their profession but it's just they need a creative vision that isn't vince and i don't this is your opportunity maybe to to get that that could be actually better for, yeah i mean and look, there are there the are some the there are some choices. I bet you if Vince was out of the picture, I bet you if they offered that to Paul Heyman, he would probably be interested in maybe being just the head of creative, maybe not like running everything, but the head of creative. There'd have Triple- to be a committee of some sort. Yeah, committee. Yeah. Triple H, Steph- like yeah. if Stephanie came back, Triple H, Heyman. I feel like they could all work together and put out a good product because like you said, Plugo, like our main bitching of the WWE has not real like every time when we're talking about a preview for a, a premium live event, I'll always call them. I refuse but, to say it. Yeah, I'll always call them pay per views. But when we're talking about a preview of a pay per view, we go through it and we go, yeah, this match is probably going to be pretty good, but the story getting here has been dog shit, and like that's that's the problem. And I think removing Vince from that equation of things will make the product better because I just think he. I mean, they've been doing the same. It's literally the rematches, fought, like roll-up victories, distraction finishes. It's been going on for years and years now to the point where like big-time wrestling fans that still watch it every week are like, bro, come on. Like, what, Can you at least pretend you care about this? Like, I'll never forgive Vince McMahon for how the Intercontinental Championship is right now. Like the Intercontinental Championship to me is a championship that I look at and I'm like, when I was a kid, that was the most important championship to me by far. My favorite dudes always had it. Bret Hart, Razor Ramon, Shawn Michael, like all those dudes had it, right? And now it's an afterthought. And I'm just like, what the hell, bro? Like, why would you I don't even know who has it. Was it Ricochet? Uh, It was Ricochet. Now Gunther, Walter (laughs) has it. And I think it actually will be all right now because they are treat. You know, I bitch. We bitch a lot about WWE. They have treated Gunther Walter like he should be treated since he's been on SmackDown. He has been one of the. Yeah. He looks like a dominating person, like he should be. Yeah, so I'm hoping that kind of, you know, and him being the foreigner with the Intercontinental Champion. If they care about the story, and that's the most important thing. If they care about the story, I think that has a chance to kind of bump it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Is there? The, yeah, Gunther. Sorry, Gunther. But uh, you put up Kyle's question. I like that. He says, "If it, will this be the opportunity to finally see the real Forbidden Door opened up?" I feel like, um, 
I don't know. Do we ever see in any scenario the WWE? There's they though, they did it back in the day with ECW where they did a little kind of swapping of talent. Do we ever see that come up again? They have nothing to benefit from it. Right. It's You're the up- other guys are the ones that stand to benefit. They have really nothing to gain from it, so I don't I don't see it. Yeah, it'd be cool and be fun for fans, but again, I don't think it's going to make them any more money. Yeah, because you're on yeah. top already. Yeah, anybody yeah. you're bringing on is a lesser, unless there's just some insane, out of this world talent that wants to work there and they make it work. But he would be signed, or she would yeah. already signed, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Yeah, and our our buddy Hab guy, you know, I I love him. He's here every week. I love him, even though he's a Hab fan. <laughs> a Bruins guy, you know, it's all right. It's all right. But he does say he does think that he can see Gunther bringing credibility. I, yeah, I, they've treated him like he matters. And besides usually the top one or two, three people, they usually don't do that. So, well, so uh, after convincing him to probably move over here because he never wanted to come to the States, you better treat him well. <laughs> I know. I, I yeah and yeah Vince, you're, you're right. For years you're right. Said he doesn't care about the Intercontinental Championship for tag team wrestling, so it makes it wasn't a massive surprise <sighs> that they mistreated the champion. Yeah, Vince is he has trouble consistently booking mid cards and tag titles. Um, again, I don't know why that is. I know that back in the day, the thought process was you got to pay two guys instead of one for tag titles. But I think that that's the money you're making now. I think you can afford a decent tag division. I don't know. Yeah. And there was know. a while where they had gotten rid of the Intercontinental title. It was gone for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, it's just, all of it to me is just. What do you think, Boris? I know how JPJ feels. What do you think about the new look of the Intercontinental title? Are you a fan? I, I don't like it, but I am a little bit older than you guys. I'm 45. So that old one that Cody Rhodes that brought back that old, you know, that's always uh, white one of the titles to me. I've, yeah, I, I wasn't crazy about the white strap to be honest. I like the black, like Macho Man strap. Yeah, uh, it's not it's not like an ugly belt, but it's it's you know it's not the greatest. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't scream Intercontinental Championship to no. me. No, keep getting your thoughts in in the chat, questions, comments, uh, anything. We're up for anything. I th- think we're you keep your Vince comments coming. We can keep on moving down the line. It was a yeah. big, said, busy week. We could go with Jeff or Sasha Banks was the next big stories. Yeah. Oh, and shout out to uh, oh, Crabity oh. for gifting a tier one sub. Oh, hey, five I'll... of them, five tier one five subs. I love wrestling, so thank shout you. Out to Car- I'll make sure you say it right. Well, I'm you trying, I'm trying, giving them the plug. I am. I see the thing with streamer, that's why I keep the phone on over here, is because <laughs> you don't see that stuff on streamer. But thank you for the follows. For the subs, keep them coming. Let's keep them popping. Get the bits. I don't know what that Big means. Big Bad Boris is in the house. <laughs> yeah, they, you got. You can unlock our faces, our emojis. It gives you access if you are subscribed, and we'll promote it now because you're here for LPW. Yeah, we're gonna talk a little bit about that if soon. If you oh. are a subscriber, you get to be in the chat for LPW Five on Twitch, and we'll be in that chat shooting yes, the shit. Will. So thank you. And yeah, Capper TV, thank you so much for the gift of Sud. That means a lot. Um, we missed a lot of comments there. A little hectic. But anyway, do we want to go down the Sasha Banks train or we want to go to Jeff? Those are the two big ones that I got. That I think it's tough. Boris, Let's you are our guest. Yeah. Um, the Jeff Hardy thing makes me really it makes me half sad and half angry. I watched that last AEW pay-per-view and I am 99.9% sure that he was under some sort of influence. Maybe I'm wrong, but he did not look good at all. He's had chance after chance after chance. And it's time. Like, I don't want to see him get in a wrestling ring ever again, just for the sake of his safety, his opponent's safety. Mm -hmm. And and the whole, the whole, I mean, he's getting dangerously close to Tammy. Sitch territory. And yeah. nobody wants to see that. I mean, Jeff, it's it's done. It's time. Go home and and rest and and get yeah. get some help. And yeah. Before, it, before we jump you gave us everything will, you had, man. Yeah. I will say, Kyle. I don't. I do see Co- Cody would be the dude to bring the winged uh, championship back. Oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. If anybody was going to bring the winged eagle Cody. title back, it and would then be Cody. Throwback says, "What's good, sport? What's we hanging around, listening to eleven p.m." Going to have some fun. Grimes versus Bra- Breaker. Hell yeah. Give me that Grimes title right now. Yeah, that's going to be fun. That's the NXT for me. I hop on to matches. I want to see. That's one I want to see. I'll watch that. 
Uh, DJ Wicked says that the new IC title <laughs> design looks more like a Kmart toy. Yeah, but that's I, that's by that's design what, because what yeah, they sell. Yeah, exactly. They buy. exactly. Yeah, toys. for sure. And then um, Throwback says it's Mercedes KV. Yeah. Crap. No. Property. Crap. Car, I could see Cody Capri bringing Capri back. Capri I could TV see. says Spenny is the goat. Hashtag facts. We love Spenny here. <laughs> I Always could see Cody bringing back the big gold instead of the winged eagle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that would be a good one, too. That could be a good one, too. That's kind of what this is sort of all about. So Yeah. Um, but as so, far as, yeah. Yeah, so as far as Jeff, I know we talked a little bit about it last night. I talked about it on Tuesday with Carl. Um, I am disappointed, I think is the biggest word, because I was his biggest supporter when he had the – when the WWE assumed yeah. that he had relapsed, but then he hadn't vice versa. I said, the worst thing you could do to a person with an addiction is assume that they're just a fuck up. I'm going to say it. Yeah. Um. So, so to see this, like it's 2022 Jeff Hardy, you can find a ride, my man. Like you have to be, if you want to get drunk every night until you're dead, you go right ahead. Just be smart about it. Like, it just get he should have got behind terrible the, advice. <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I totally, like, yeah, I get it. I get it. Okay, I come from I'm four yeah. and a half, I'm four years sober. Okay, good for you. And so it's a conscious decision on my end, and it is a battle. But if he doesn't want to get the help, nobody's going to make me. That's kind of what yeah, I mean. That, Maybe that, I, yeah, I, that's I, that like until I he wants it to poorly, get it. But yeah. like if he never wants to stop drinking, well, then he's never going to stop. But if he wants to do it, he needs to do it. And not put other people's lives at risk. Yeah. If that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying drink until you're dead because that's a terrible idea. And I would love to see Jeff Hardy clean and sober and successful, but nobody's going to get help for Jeff until Jeff's ready to get help. He has to be the one that says, all right, mm -hmm. it's got to stop. Yeah. And I personally never want to see, I don't need to see him in another wrestling ring ever again if he's not going to get right. Like I yeah. would rather him be healthy and live a long life and never take another bump again rather than him taking bumps and hurting himself, possibly others. You got, I, I yeah, I said that all wrong. I've been saying this all <laughs> week. I should have had this down to a T. No, but, it's all right. But, it just, but anyway. like, yeah. And I, I agree with what both of you said. Like, you know, we're wrestling fans. I feel like at one point in our lives or for maybe the majority of his career, we all love Jeff Hardy. Mm -hmm. Like Jeff Hardy's badass wrestler. He's an all time hall of fame wrestler, but yeah. he's had these demons his whole career. And like Plugo said, and he can obviously speak to it better than I can with his past and him getting through that. But like, yeah, if he doesn't, if he doesn't want the help, a million people can throw him all the help in the world. And at the end of the day, it's not going to work because he's not going to want to do it. Like, and this is what I said to it about that part, about the help part. My yeah. last, it, it, you can tell me every day you need to go to rehab. You need to go to rehab. You need to get right. You need to get right. And when you're, a drinker or an addict, you think you're untouchable, even in the best times and the worst times, like on the highs and the lows of drinking. Like you just think like, I'm untouchable. I'm I'll be fine. Nope. You're not going to take my car today. I got this. You know what I mean? It's just one of those things where he's got to sit down at the end of the day and go, it's time. I can stop whenever I want to. Exactly. Yeah. Like that was me. Like, Oh, I'm good. Like this ain't a big deal. This is just a hobby. It's just beers fun. You know what I mean? Like, and then it becomes more and it becomes something that you do all the time. And then you're like, Oh shit. And then like I said on Tuesday, had somebody not stepped up and like that night, I probably would have drove my car. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I know that I like to have fun on the show. Plug goes goofy. Ha ha ha. But no, had somebody not literally took my keys from me and, let me call them every nasty name in the book. I might've gotten my car that night and I might not be sitting here today. So in that moment, you couldn't tell me anything. Mm. I just happened to get lucky. And somebody was like, nah, we're not having this today. Yes, and I then know. I woke and I woke up the next morning and I said, okay, something's got to change. Yeah. And ultimately I was going to just take a break. And then I just decided, nah, let's just cut it out. Why even put myself in that situation? And that's something Jeff's got to do. Jeff's got to do it. Like I see all of the Twitter discourse. I saw what Booker T said, and I was not happy. But how do you guys feel about that? Did you guys see what Booker T said? I did that not. It, that he, a, he, he said that AEW, AEW right, has some responsibility because of the bumps he's taking on AEW is causing him to relapse. 
That's a slippery slope. It is. And somebody carp in the in the in the chat had a comment somewhere. He says at some point the company has to take responsibility and tell him to bring the big spots way down. Since he has been in AEW, he is taking more big spots than he has since the TLC days. Yeah, but whose idea are those? Are those his ideas? That exactly, exactly. We idea? don't know. We is that Tony he's, Khan saying, like, oh, you need to do all these big spots that people know you for, or is that yeah, Jeff well, saying no, Jeff why Hardy. don't I do this? Yeah, he's Jeff Hardy. This is like is he, he does. And if Jeff Hardy tells to, tells the booker, tells Tony, whatever, he goes, Hey, I, yeah, I think we should add that. Are you gonna look at Jeff Hardy and say, No, we should, no, he's Jeff Hardy? You know what I mean? Like I no, I don't I don't like the argument that like AEW or even any when he was in WWE, anything. I don't, you he's, know, at the end of the day, he made and I'm look at this is not saying that he's probably dealing with mental stuff. Clearly, he's probably physically beaten for doing this for 30 years. Like, I'm not saying he doesn't go through physical and mental pain and things like that, but like he made the choice to get drunk and he made the choice to drive his car at nine o'clock in the morning drunk to the point where that what he blew and that that was almost four like that was like three or four times over the limit like that's not a couple of beers yeah that's yeah. not he made you know what i mean i i, and I like, just, like boris said it's a slippery slope when you start like saying like well because, aw should take on no, let's i don't no, want to i don't know I, I'll, the facts are the facts are the, he's been arrested for DUI five times. This is yeah. the first time in AEW. So he was taken. He's Jeff freaking Hardy. This is what he does. This is he, if he wanted to be, if he walked into Tony Khan's office and said, listen, I'll sign here, but I want to be a technical wrestler that does only groundwork. Tony Khan would have signed him because yeah. he's Jeff Hardy. Jeff can say, like, there's plenty of people taking bumps. There's plenty of people taking spots that aren't ultimately making that decision. Now, it's he he just has to step up and say, "Listen, I can't I can't keep doing this to myself." That's up yeah. to him too. Some of the spots he takes, yeah, they're crazy, but he wants to take them because that's what he's known for. Yeah, he was doing that in the WWE. Some of those spots he was taking, even yeah. on his last run, he did some ladder spot into a table that I was like, "Oh shit, dude! You don't have to! You don't have to do that! You're Jeff Hardy, yeah, bro. you're Jeff Hardy. You're like full, like in your we full, know, like, good, you, bro. We you, know you but, can do that. You've been doing that for 25 years for us. So, like it's cool, man. You can slow down a bit. You can slow yeah, down. Mick a Foley bit. said he didn't want to be the guy that took the that pulled the sock out of his tights, and then he felt his body start to go, and he was like, you know what? Maybe it's time for me to be the guy who pulls yeah, the sock maybe, out of his. Tights. Maybe it's not so bad being the but guy. But I think he's got a bit more self awareness, maybe than Jeff Hardy. Yeah, does. maybe I don't know. At the end of the day, like, and I agree with you know uh, another comment where Ecstasy of Gold he said it. He goes, addiction's a hell of a battle, and I'm sympathetic to that. However. When he puts other people's lives in danger, it's beyond crossing a line. It's true. And how it's got to stop because at some point, can... the way like he's going to kill somebody or he's going to kill himself. Tammy Sitch killed somebody. So, yes, I mean, Tammy Sitch that, killed somebody. That like, that's where we're going. That's where every, this is going. Every day in the news, you hear of some kid that lost their life from a drunk driving incident or mm -hmm. a drunk driver or anything. Like, it's, 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 a, it's easy to blame everyone else it's easy to say aw's forcing them to do big spots it's where was matt hardy i saw that too like where was matt and matt said i have a family i have children i saw him for a little bit saturday night and i went home i had i can't yeah, matt be hardy with has you. nothing to do with anything. i can't no. be with you you can't be with and listen and i know from experience and alcohol is very easy to obtain it's oh, the yeah. easiest of the uh you know, substances recreate substances or whatever, yeah. or whatever you want to call it. It's super easy. Like if you want to drink, you're going to find a way to drink. I just, I'm disappointed that in this day and age, like he can't just call an Uber or I read reports that he got a car and he doesn't even have a license. Like who gave him the car? Like, and I'm not saying jump in front of Jeff Hardy and forcibly keep him out of the car. I mean, at some point you can only do so much. He's, you know, but there has to be accountability to him. And I don't want him to come back to a, I don't want to see him next week. I don't want to see him in a month. I want no, to see him get I mean, right. He's, he needs to be held accountable for this because it's he just, might be, it, he might be facing some jail yeah. like for this one specifically. Like he might mm -hmm. be facing some, and I, again, obviously I don't want to see, look at, I don't want to see anybody's career or life yeah. get ruined, but he, every time he gets behind the car, when he's drinking, somebody's life can get ruined. 
And, and he, like you said, this is his fifth time. Fifth and that time. doesn't include a couple other times where he wasn't driving, but he was still drunk in public or there's been other things than just the five, but five yeah. times is five times too many. And I you hope know what he, I mean? I and hope he like, gets clean. I hope course. he gets sober. I root no. for him. I always root for people because I do believe that people can change. I do believe that addictions get a hold of somebody and it's hard to get out of it because you, again, and that's the other side of this. He is Jeff Hardy. Mm -hmm. He's at a bar. People are probably like, oh, I get to drink with Jeff Hardy tonight. Like, let buy in. You know, it's very easy in his situation. And it's also very easy for people not in the situation to completely blame everybody else and it is a slippery slope like you said boris if you start blaming the company like that would be like if i had a really tough day at work and i came home got wasted and drove my car and said well you know it's just because work ride me really hard today it's not their fault it's my decision to do that mm -hmm. I, I just think a lot about uh sorry to cut you off there i no, think a ahead. lot about years ago that that tna pay-per-view and that main event was sting and yep. the fact that he even got another shot in, yep. in WWE after after that, you know, I mean, he's he's had chances and chances. So now it's time to it's time to make good. Yeah. And even in the statement that AEW said, they said that he was suspended and they even included like Jeff will not be back until he's completed whatever treatment and he proves that he can maintain his sobriety. And I, I think that last part of being in there means that if you come back, dude, we're going to be checking on you. Like you're, it's not just, Oh, I, I went, I did your program. You wanted me to do. Okay. I'm good now. And then we have this happen for a sixth time. You know what I mean? Like that made me feel like they're going to be like, Hey, look at, we want you to come back. If you are healthy to come back, all forms of healthy. Uh, but you bet your ass when you're back here, like it's not going to be like before, like you need to yeah, cause, show well, us that you're going to stay that way. Healthy. And just from no. a, just from a strictly in ring standpoint, it's not like a, you're you're relying on your other part partner in that to be sound body, sound mind. Oh, yeah. your, oh, yeah. your your life is a risk. If he slip in that sting, infamous sting thing, if he drops sting wrong or something goes wrong, you know, we're talking about a whole nother conversation here. So if I'm a performer, I wouldn't want to even work with Jeff yeah. until I knew for sure, because you never know. And I, and I hate to say that about somebody because it's a, and ultimately too, I do feel bad for Matt because this program that they had lined up was supposed to be, I fully believe that they were going to win the tag titles last night. Yeah, I, I mean, now, I think that's yeah, what was going to happen. And Matt has been a consummate professional about this. He said he'll be back stronger than ever. He's got to focus on family right now. He's saying all the right things. But I also wonder, because Jeff is, according to Tony Khan, is open to be, getting help. I wonder if Matt didn't sit him down and say, hey, man, like, this is our lives you're messing with, too. Like, you need to start stepping up for the for the family. I wonder, I would love to have, I don't want to say love. I would have been interested to be like a fly in the wall for that conversation because that affects me. I don't know how much money Matt's maybe lost over the years because he's, because Jeff just is having some problems getting right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't let's know. Let's try, let's try him with the book. Let's try him being an agent. Yeah. I let's think get yeah. him out of the ring and let him use his mind and see if he still gets that creative fix. By, yeah. by using his mind to create instead of doing all the crazy shit. I'm sure he's got things to offer yeah. in oh, terms yeah. of agenting but, or, or yeah. booking or creative or what have you. And yeah. say what you will about Tony Khan. I don't envision, I don't see him like pulling Sting backstage, for instance, 63-year-old Sting and going, jump off that balcony into three tables or else you're fired. Yeah, like, I just don't envision that because no, because no. he's a fan of these people. But you have to understand these. I, I've never been in the wrestling ring. I've never done it. I don't know the thrill of it. I don't know the excitement of it. I just know if I'm Jeff Hardy and I'm getting you, you're giving me the opportunity to show my worth and show the WWE what they missed. Yeah, I'll jump off that thirty foot ladder. I've done it a hundred times. Sting, the WWE threw that threw him away. Said, Ah, we don't need you. We don't want you. We use you for the game release, but you're you're banged up. You're no good to us. He gets an opportunity to go to AEW. He's going to want to show out and prove that those people were wrong. It's a, it's an ego thing. It's a pride thing. So ultimately, again, at the end of the day, these performers have to say, I'm not taking that bump. I don't want to do that. And then it should be okay that they don't want to do that. Yeah. I think. Yeah, in this I don't day see and age, being that guy either. 
I don't either. I don't either. But I, I think I think the bottom line when it comes to Jeff is like we're all fans of him. We're all rooting for mm-hmm. him. But at some point, and I think this need. I mean, it should have happened before this time. But I think this time needs to be the time where us collectively, as whatever wrestling fans, wrestling community, whatever you want to call it, we need to just be like, all right, this guy needs to go. Like, like you know, you said it earlier, Boris. Hab guy in the chat said it. Like at this point. Jeff Hardy has nothing to prove to us inside a wrestling ring anymore. Like it's we're it's good, man. Like go get healthy, go try to live a healthy life for the rest of your life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I how many, I don't want to I don't want to read about Jeff Hardy passing away for any reason 5 years from now or a year from like get healthy, try to live a good life. And like, ultimately you and know, if you, and if you choose not to, at least don't put other people's lives at risk. Like yeah. you got to you got to play it smart. And yeah. just call the cab, call yeah. an Uber, call a buddy. I think Sean Ross Sapp said it best. He was like, You're Jeff Hardy. If you would have put on Twitter, hey, I'm I right need here. a ride. I'm at this I need place. A, ride. a thousand cars. A thousand would people would have been like, I'm on <laughs> You're my able way. To pick your car that you want. Exactly. To because yeah, that's he, true. Because this can be wrestling is we love the performers. We love this business. We love this sport. We love the performers first and foremost. We get attached to them. I can't imagine a Jeff Hardy stand going, you know what? I saved Jeff Hardy's life tonight. I drove him home. Yeah, yeah it was 3 o'clock in the morning, but it was at least better than hearing about him dying. Yeah. yeah. You know 100%. what I mean? 100%. All right. I know we, 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 told, we told Boris we were a lot of fun and good times. Yeah, we the he, the heavy these, topics out the way. All you know? the heavy stuff out of the way. Maybe <laughs> we can have some fun now. Hey, you but know, this is this reality. These are things yeah. that happen. Yeah. And Pluggo, I appreciate you being honest and sharing that story. Yeah. You know, that, that yeah. puts a slant on it that, you know, yeah. and, helps us understand. And I, I always, I was very, I've always been very weird and like internally with my struggles. I, um, but this has been a therapeutic way for me to kind of like, talk to people about it and kind of be open and honest about it so i appreciate that jpj over the few times that we've had to talk yeah we've talked about yeah have let me have the floor and i'm no i'm no saint i'm not perfect i've made mistakes but like ultimately too at the end of the day if anybody's in that chat and they're dealing with any sort of addiction issues or any issues whatsoever dm me hit me up i may and again if i have to sit on the phone with you at three o'clock in the morning and lose sleep helping you find a ride home wherever you may be in the world I would rather do that than have to show up to a funeral or something worse. And again, like I said, I appreciate you guys like letting me be open and honest about that and not judging me for it. (laughs) This is like a very special episode of very special. Yeah, exactly. Lego opens up, but no, (laughs) yeah, it's just, it's something that I have a little experience in and I like to, you know, and now, that, the, get, and now back to the and now back to I was gonna say back to the reality of, of, your... Plu- of Plugos friends making fun of him relentlessly yes. in the chat. See, so uh, <laughs> that's when I like, <laughs> uh, I've been on. This is my third night in a row. Yeah, I know. It's Plugo cool. week. Plugo week Plugo here at Love week, Wrestling. Man. So, uh, yeah. uh, but no, Tim says uh, you know you're an outstanding person and Thank a saint. You. Thank you. Thank I, you. I, I would agree. All right, a little bit of a lighter news story. We'll we'll move on to the news story. So. Last night at about 11 o'clock Eastern, uh, Raj Giri. Nine o'clock Mountain. Nine o'clock Mountain, <laughs> yes. At 11 o'clock Eastern and nine o'clock uh, I've been mountain. subtracting two hours from times for my whole life, so I got this down. Yeah, yeah. I was going to wonder was... what that's like. For I, I was going to ask when we got to a lighter topic. What is that like for you when you get like interview requests and I'm like, we go on at 8 p.m. and then you immediately have to be like, is that? I, I have to i always clarify the time zones as soon as it's eastern i know just subtract two times for me it's a lot harder when i'm like following like like indie shows that tour around and like well we've got a show in uh in bristol connecticut at seven i'm like well what the fuck time zone is that and then we're, we're in indiana or we're in uh, california or whatever yeah. so i have to find out what time zone is eastern i've got down but the yeah. other ones i actually have to go on the phone and google and find out yeah I mean, even for me, it works with the New Japan ones because then the New Japan ones are at 2 a.m. Eastern, yeah. so it's midnight, uh, which yeah. probably isn't so bad at, for me. I 2 a.m. is not happening. Yeah, those, yeah. Kyle, those I appreciate that comment, Kyle. Uh, right? Those New Japan shows start at yeah either two or three in the morning for me, and I'm just like. Oh, so I, I think I well, the reason it. I brought that up is because the news broke at 11 p.m. We had just gotten off the side cast last night yeah. and I went straight to bed because I'm an old man and I need my beauty rest. 
but for you and it's nine o'clock good. are you are you still rocking are you still up at nine kicking are you uh are you a oh, night no. owl on, yeah on, no i work i work uh 6 a.m i clock in every okay. morning so yeah i'm i'm uh, i'm selling logs me by too now. there you go there you go <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, so, I'm, so it's safe to assume we all woke we up all were sleeping but apparently uh, raj giri who is obviously the founder of wrestling inc uh he tweeted uh quote i'm hearing sasha banks has been released I don't know if it, if it's uh, if she requested it or if it was on WWE's end. That's all he said. Uh, Sean Ross Sapp earlier today he had a post on Fightful Select um, where he dove into it. He said he could he couldn't he can't it hasn't been confirmed to him yet, but he has also heard of that. Uh, so nothing's been confirmed yet. So I think again this is very much just a hearsay type thing now, but. You do have Raj Giri, who runs Wrestling Inc. as a pretty established site. Sean Ross Sapp is obviously very established. So the news that that there's even a possibility with everything that's already happened with Sasha Banks and Naomi, but hearing that Sasha Banks, according to Raj, has been released, that's to me, that is crazy. That's a wild story. Sasha Banks, I, I – and again, my views of WWE have – been slanted over the last handful of years but like i would make an argument that sasha banks is like a what is she a top two top three mm -hmm. stuff like when i'm we're talking mainstream ish star in the company she's at the near the top of the mountain in that company She'll um, be a tony con toy by american thanksgiving when is there american you go. thanksgiving november right november november okay so soon yeah. or 90 days if they do the 90 day thing that would be made or I'm sorry, yeah. July, August, September. Chicken. Yeah, and I, I mean that's the I mean. But by by full gear. Yeah. Um, if she were to, I mean, if she gets released, that is crazy. I mean, it is what it is. Whatever's happening with whatever that for initial story of you know the suspension and all the stuff like that. But if she were to end up in AEW, which you know nowadays, if a big star gets released from WWE, that's always kind of oh they're gonna go to you know if that happens that drastically shifts the women's division for AEW. She I, could be the first Freddie Prinze Jr. women's champion. She could be. She <laughs> definitely could be. Give Boris the pen, Freddie. Give him the pen. <laughs> we got the podcast. We do the podcast. Go you got a commentator. Down, you got Freddie. the pen. That's it. That's it. We're, so, we're set. Boris, we, we, we've talked about the Sasha thing since the initial walkout what were your thoughts of her and naomi walking out on raw are, are you since you're in the wrestling business and you do how do you feel about that you're yeah you're getting the show going you're putting your guys i'm in the wrestling up, business you're on the commentary table lpw lights are about to drop and then spencer goes oh yeah our champs just walked how do you well, how do you feel about that I'll preface this by saying that I'm not a regular WWE weekly viewer. I follow kind of what's going on on the social medias and I try to take, you know, check some stuff out here and there and it's nothing against them. It's just that that's a very scheduled wrestling and I kind of do mine when I can fit it in and I watch way too much stuff. Anyway, this is my thought when I first heard about this is if you thought for a minute after the first six months that they were going to give a shit about the women's tag team titles you're crazy it was a new toy so they could do the first ever thing yep. and make it a big deal that you know that mm -hmm. they're they're doing women's tag team titles but it was just going to become an afterthought that's why i don't want to see aew trios titles because again it'll be a cool new toy for a couple of months and then it's going to get thrown to the wayside kind of like this pacific mid-atlantic whatever it is thing oh, um and i appreciate them wanting it to be something but i don't think it was ever meant to be anything there isn't a lot of, of women's tag teams i'm not sure if there's more to it than just that tag team thing it is kind of unprofessional to kind of take your ball and go home but i believe mm -hmm. she's done this before and i don't know her i've never met her but i get a bit of a vibe she's high maintenance it's fair that's i mean that's that's some of the rumors out there she's tough but to also i with. respect somebody who sticks to their guns but i think kind of piecing out at, at that that's like really bad etiquette piecing out like yeah from the building when the show was written and you're going on live tv and uh, yeah i think that's a thing where when it first happened everyone was just like hey like like what you said i i respect that she know that she knows her worth and she stands she stands up for herself and things like that but like the show already started apparently and like you're already part of the you know like that's you know 
the, yes, like they're etiquette. amazing. We got a third beard. We do. House. We have a third tonight. beard on the show tonight. Yeah, mine's not quite as majestic as those ones, though. That's solid work. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and I, I think, you know, if you were to think about Sasha Banks and AEW, like I said, I feel like that is that is a mega star. And don't get me wrong, there have been very good performers and very good wrestlers that have jumped ship from WWE to, to AEW. Uh, John Moxley being a major star, you know, and there's others. But I feel like Sa- Sasha Banks right now, currently, for where their women's division is in AEW, if she were to show up in AEW, that is automatically like, that's a yeah, top she- tier talent. That's a huge that's defector. a win the women's title on the first night town. Kind of. Like, that's that's where you're at. Like, oh, this is the new, she's the most important figure. I don't in the know. I don't know where she ends up. I don't ultimately know. I mean, she Hollywood is also. Hollywood gonna, is where she's. Uh, yeah. She did a Star Wars summer. Yeah, she, other, was right? in, she was in the Mandalorian. Um, Crit, uh, Kevin Hart requested to have her on, like, one of his Netflix oh. shows. Um yeah. You know, she, she was on Hot Ones. She was on Hot yeah. Ones. She did that show, which kind of the chicken wing show. Yes, yeah. she did that, and that's where Tiggy's, the of Star Wars Tiggs takes the TBS title within a month. Spencer's hot take within the month. So you're assuming that then there would be no no compete at all. Well, there's got to be a no complete regardless of. I would think unless yeah. unless this is on Sasha's side and she like I did read somehow got it her- legally. Yeah, she got, some, she got some lawyers involved. To yeah, so well, maybe... Vince might be distracted with some other stuff That's right what now. I was she's not paying well. attention. That's yeah. what I was going to ask you, boys. Do you think that maybe she saw this as an opportunity to go, hey, just let me go because he's going to have all this other shit to deal with? And Sasha Banks, I mean, as for as talented as she is, is not on his radar yeah. right now. It's been, you know, love wrestling. Spencer says if her lawyers get her out of her contract, she's out of her contract. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So I mean, if it if it is like that, and I like Hab Guy's idea, you get an open challenge for the TBS title. Come Banks out, comes out and wins it. Uh, yeah, yeah, they don't have her win the secondary title. No, yeah. you have her win the main title. Yeah, and I also I don't think I don't think you would do if it was. Yeah, I don't think you would do that to Jade Cargill. Jade Cargill. Yeah, I do have but another another question. She's got to put over Britt Baker. <laughs> in, in this, yeah, everybody has to put over Britt. We're all old, older gentlemen who know, remember when Stone Cold took his ball and went yep. home. Now, when he took his ball and went home, there wasn't any other viable options like an AEW or WWE, or I'm sorry, or what? just AEW, I guess we'll say that. There's yeah. not many, or Impact. It's not as booming as it is now. So he ultimately came back. Do you ever, do you think maybe? Freddie Prince Jr. Wrestling? Yeah, <laughs> Freddie for shoot. He, Boris gets it. Sign us up, Freddie. Let's go. Exactly. Alex is gonna have a lot. It's, to it's shop together. I'm, I'm in the wrestling business. Yeah, <laughs> we are too. <laughs> We're all in it. We're on a podcast. That's the business. Right? Yeah, right. Um, uh, but I guess what I was saying is, do we maybe see a scenario where Sasha just sits out for a while, does her thing, and maybe comes back? Does the Bray Wyatt thing? Does the Bray Wyatt thing? Because I mean. She could go to AEW, but that's literally, I don't know if she's above, I don't want to say she's better than Impact, but I think she's a bigger star than Impact would be able to pay her. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a big one. I'm trying to read it. It's in it. It's an interesting coincidence that it's Cena month. Part of the reason Cena might be the goat and why he always won and got all the big moments because he was always business first. He never put himself before the business. There is something to be said about talent that makes the very best with what they are handed. Jericho is another good example. He was always in a great position and made everything out of nothing. Then he says, maybe Sasha should reflect on that. Uh, yeah, I think the way that John Cena is treated and the way that Sasha Banks is treated is not the same. And we're not so there. I, we don't I, know what's going on with exactly with and exactly. And There's a lot of stuff behind the scenes with a broad brush like that. Exactly, exactly. I just think it's two different scenarios. Um, and like Spencer just says, John Cena completely trashed the Nexus. Uh, that is true. He, he, he buried, it. He buried, he buried them. them. But, but I guess to Kyle's point, just to play devil's did, no, no, I know I get what he's saying. Did Cena, did Cena go back there and go, I have to beat the entire Nexus, or was that the WWE saying, I'm gonna beat the Maybe John just was never vocal about it and said, you know, there's what, a lot of rumors that. about, about Cena, not necessarily. Yeah. Back in the day, there's like, didn't what you yeah. hear, but there's, I mean, Alex there, Riley, 
Riley's got supposedly. Yeah, I was gonna just so say, didn't Alex Riley like years, so, his push you know, stop because perfect. Cena ended up not liking him or something like that? <laughs> Literally. Um, yeah, he, Cena refused to lose. Hey, listen, I think that was Kyle, one of his t-shirts, wasn't it? Yeah. Kyle called me an absolute yeah. legend earlier, so I had. No, to it's, look at I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying it's a bad yeah. comment. I'm just saying, like, hey, yeah, our buddy bro. Bobby in the chat. Yes, we've got an extra beer tonight, Big Bad Boris. Stay tuned after Between Two Beards and hang out with Bobby and Papa Smokes as they give you the most extensive and best MLW coverage on the internet today. Just to go to that Major Love Wrestling right after us. Show those dudes some love. They're a good yeah. plug. That's a good plug. That's all you yeah. call your plug Oh, Good plug. Yeah, that's what he, it's what he's the best in the biz. Best in the biz. I plug plug best everything. Best in the biz. Um but maybe it's a work. This would be a weird this work. This would be a hell of a work. Well, it would be a hell of a work. I don't know. I, I just feel like and I and don't get me wrong, like I understand where your comment was coming from. I just think I just think Cena has always, yeah, he's been a WWE guy. Um, but he's been a WWE guy because he's got his way a lot in WWE. So like, you know, he did what you know, I think it goes both ways. So and I, I think, think every when you're in that position, sorry, when you're in that position where you get to be the top guy, I think you've got a lot of clout to make things happen. Yes, 100%. You, you, you hear that, Spencer? We're top guys. We got clout. Yeah, yeah we, got, <laughs> we got our buddy Dan in the chat hopping in saying hello. Hi, Dan. Dan's a warrior, Golden State Warriors fan, so I love Dan, but starting in four minutes at 9 o'clock, I will hate Dan <laughs> until the end of the game. Andrew yeah, Wiggins is Canadian, by the way. Is he? Yes, Former he number is. one pick. I yeah, think, he's uh, he's, he's Canadian. Been giving us he's some Canadian. issues. He is Canadian. I should Google that before I say. Things. No, I think uh, you're right. He is Canadian. I, I do remember. He's Canadian. He was number one overall pick, and then Anthony Bennett was also Canadian, number one overall pick. Didn't yeah. work out so much. Yeah, but. and Dan says bring it on for sure. <laughs> for sure. May the better team win, and hopefully it's the Celtics. But either way, I still love you, Dan. Uh, but uh, yeah. All right. So again, Sasha Banks will on that again. I feel like these are, I feel like that story, the Vince story are stories that we're going to be talking about probably for a little bit now with all the updates or whatever is going to come, uh, from that. (laughs) I can't in the crusty, the clown. That's hilarious. Oh, there you go. He's Canadian. He even has the nickname. Maple Jordan. Jordan. I like that. He was and Andrew Wiggins. For those that don't know basketball, he was a Minnesota supposed, Timberwolves. He was the Canadian MJ. Yeah, when he came out. He was supposed to be the next big thing. He had some decent years in Minnesota. Ended up getting traded because I think that whole dynamic they were just breaking it up, and got over to Golden State. And this was the best. This yeah, is I'm, the best I'm glad, year. I'm glad this he waited. This is the first time to, uh, he made an All Star team. Yeah, this is the best I'm year glad he had. waited till uh, Game Four of the NBA Finals to show that he uh, was a number one pick. Now, again, and I preface that because Anthony Bennett is also Canadian, and he. Well, yeah, um, he didn't have a good time. But is he? The, he was number one overall. But yeah, yes, so highest drafted has, Canadian Hooper ever of all time. The first, I think he was the first number one pick. Well, yeah. First, first Canadian number, basketball player to be a yes. number one pick. That makes sense. Yes, I believe the so. Canadian MJ Mo Jabari. There you go. Mo Jabari. Hey, Mo hey, Jabari. Well, He's, speaking of, we are done yeah. with like the main stories, the wrestling stories of the week. So we do have Big Bad Boris here. He is a commentator for he, a, a little thing that we got called Love Pro Wrestling. So Love Pro Wrestling here. We can talk a little bit about go ahead, plug. I'll let you know. I just I just wanted to say um Usually Spencer yells at us for our guests and our yeah, budget he didn't us today. Not today. today. He's like, spend whatever you need to get Boris on, make it happen. And there you go. He's check the voice. Clear. Of Let's check better clear, Spencer. Yeah, yeah Spencer. <laughs> Usually he's does. like, I can't believe you did that. We're like, yeah. Boris is coming on. He's like, whatever, blank check, give yeah. it to him. Make he's it the happen. voice of love so, for wrestling. My check is the... a six pack of PBR, but they're tall boys. <laughs> hey, uh, it's the hey. way to be. You oh, earn it, earn it. So you are, <laughs> as JPJ said, the voice of Love Pro Wrestling. How did that become to be? How did you get involved? And I'm not just saying this. I'm a company man. One of the most, one of the more fantastic, awesome, exciting, independent wrestling in Alberta that we've seen. 
Uh, I went to the first show as a fan just because I okay. wanted to check it out. And, uh, and you know, a, a lot of my friends were working there. And, you know, I, I saw Spencer there and we kind of shook hands. And, and I don't know, we've met a couple of times briefly at Clandestine Science Society and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, shook his hand and wished him luck and, and really, really enjoyed that first show. Mm. And then I got, the, I got the DM. He slid into my DMs and he Hello. asked me if I, wanted to, if I wanted to be a part of it. And I, without hesitation, I was like, absolutely. And it's been a blast. It's been so great. The venue is beautiful. Mm. The quality of the shows is beautiful. The, the positive vibe that we have at the shows between Spencer and all the talent and the fans, I'm having an absolute blast. Awesome. Some of the awesome. most fun that I've had. And and it's been awesome, too, because I've been kind of on the shelf because PWA hasn't, has, it's, God, it's been over two years now that we haven't run the show. So I was kind of, I, I was gathering dust and I, got, I feel like I got my chops back and, every show it's getting better and better and it's it's awesome yeah and i i was gonna ask you like obviously plugo and i are both from the states so we don't have a ton of exposure to the canadian independent wrestling scene you know obviously being a part of love wrestling this last year plus with spencer and then it's definitely shown us more of it now obviously mm -hmm. but for someone who might not know who a big bad boris is before love pro wrestling you just mentioned was a pwa you just mentioned like where how did you get into the wrestling business was it always as a commentator did you do other things like talk about a little bit of your background of i'll give you, you i'll give you the, wrestling. the very very quick origin story the first thing i ever did in wrestling is like back you got you guys might be a little too you do you remember geo cities and you can make your own free websites and all that stuff like back i do back i do in like very, very 90s, so i do yes i had a, a geo cities wrestling website i've been a fan for my whole life and I ended up doing a, a sh uh, I, I, I did podcasts before podcasts were cool. There was a technology called Real Audio that you could stream audio on. And that. it was just buffery garbage because just connections <laughs> were everything was dial up and it was connections were so slow. <laughs> and I, I started doing that and I did that for a good few years and ended up actually getting a chance to have really cool guests. I had Bobby Heenan on my show. Oh my God, had, nice. I'm, try, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember. God, it's so long, but I had a lot of really, really cool people uh, on the show. And then I ended up getting a call from through some mutual friends uh, to do ring announcing for PWA. Their ring announcer was working in radio and he got a job out of the province. So I got in uh, doing ring announcing and I ring announced for a while until I got the opportunity to turn heel and, and do managing for a while, which oh, I loved. It was, a, it was a lot of fun. Some of my some of my favorite times. And then uh, the guy that I was managing got hurt. And for some reason, they didn't really want to put me with anybody else. So I was kind of behind the scenes. I taught myself Photoshop to make posters. I taught myself video editing. And through the video editing, I started doing the commentary and loved it. And, and I think it's kind of my, my wheelhouse and what I'm good at. And mm -hmm. it snowballed into what, what I'm doing now. But yeah, with PWA for got almost 20 years now wow. uh they've been they've been on the shelf since the pandemic started and i'm not yep. exactly sure what the future holds for that but mm -hmm. uh having a blast with love though yeah. I, th I thank spencer very much for letting me be a part of it because it's yeah. really really a, it's a fun positive thing it really and is there's a lot I of negativity in in the wrestling but we we keep it positive and the vibe at the shows is awesome yeah, and you know, I I unfortunately haven't been able to make it up there for one yet. That's on the to do list. Yeah, hopefully sometime soon. But I've I've watched the ones that have been shown on this Twitch channel, and the last one, LPW four. The tr I mean, the whole card was amazing. It was a very very good show. And the, the quality of the stream was really, really good. Yes. And the guys, the guys that do all the technological stuff yes. with the lower third graphics, and everything I, was on point. And yeah. I just feel yes. like every show that I've seen, it's it's getting better and better and better. And yeah, I mean, you gotta we're having our fifth event next week, which we'll dive into a little bit. But like, you know, for five events, you watch LPW four, and you know, that's yeah. a damn good show. That's a oh, damn yeah. good show. That triple threat ladder Matt, for the time that was incredible that was an incredible performance by all three of those guys um michael I don't wanna, richard I don't wanna, blaze i don't want to tell too many too many stories out of school and i hope i don't get any trouble for saying this but i got a uh, I, i'm pretty tight with with blaze he's one of my best friends and he we we chat on the phone every day yeah. and the night before he's like 
you're, you're going to have to hold a ladder for me so I don't die, was the exact quote. Because when he yeah. walked across, he had the ladder right in front of the table. So I had lost my headset, and I was literally holding the ladder so he could walk across. But the way he worded it in the text is, you have to hold this ladder so I don't die. And I'm like, oh, here you go again. <laughs> you can't tell. Yeah, that was, an, uh, that was an incredible. Uh, oh, we got Bobby Munson saying. He hopes uh, Sheik Akbar shows up in Edmonton with his sexy new Prairie Pro Wrestling Championship. There you go. Yeah, hey, maybe Sheik's he will. Dick. Calls All me right. a donkey. Every, every, every <laughs> right, show calls go. me a donkey. Uh oh. I, uh -oh. I, I, I believe that you are the first commentator that we've had on that is true. between two beards. It's usually been some wrestlers, and we always ask them, like, what what wrestler inspired them vice versa but as in commentary who do you go to who are you looking at going like they are the cream of the crop top tier commentator out well there it's right funny now. for me because like when you get into wrestling as a kid you you know you always picture yourself as the wrestler and i never did right. that i never thought that i could do that and maybe it's just because i'm not like brimming with self-esteem but i never thought when i was a kid that i could do that my fave one of my favorites of all time uh, is Joey Styles partially because I think he he fit that company really well, but he also called the majority of the shows by himself. By and himself, for years yeah. in PWA, I called you know the majority of the shows by myself. Um, there's a lot of guys now that I quite like. I think Beta Scott's really good. Um, yeah, I I, I like I like Kevin Kelly. I did yeah. not like Ian Riccoboni when he came into Ring of Honor because I was so used to Kevin Kelly, but he's grown on me over over the years, and I think he and Caprice do really really well. Uh, I like Kevin. Kevin Gill works really well in GCW. I don't know if he would work as well in like a more traditional company, but there's yeah. a lot of really talented commentators out there, and you got to love Gorilla and Bobby. I mean, come on. Oh, this is God. a great. This is a great comment or question from Bobby. Uh, he said commentary is difficult. Boris, how do I get better at it? Five years in, and he still hates the sound of his own voice. You never don't hate the sound of your own voice. Um, yeah, for it's it's just it's reps. You know, just like wrestling matches, you got to you put the time in it and just try to work a lot of shows. Um, I like to, especially like this is something I'm doing a lot with with Love Wrestling now because there's a lot of new guys I haven't worked with before. So I always try to talk to them and learn a little bit about their characters and names of moves and stuff like that. So I at least know what I'm talking about because there's nothing worse than calling a match with a new guy and you know nothing about him. And then you're yeah. just like, oh, that's a side headlock. Um, and, and just kind of, you know. I try not to make it about me. I, sometimes mm -hmm. I get a little carried away and have a little bit of fun, depending who I'm calling stuff with. But I make sure it's about what you know, what the guys are in the ring, and 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 know what you're selling. Yeah. Shout out oh. to our buddy Wordsmith. Wordsmith in the, the chat. Yeah, we yeah, love yeah, your voice yeah. too. Yeah. Now I was gonna follow up with it. How do you balance like? You want to be a part of the show. You want to be the best commentator possible. You want people at the end of the day to know Big Bad Boris. But how do you dial it back enough to know that, hey, I have a job where it's about the performer. Yeah, my it's job is to put the match it's not the about wrestlers me. over, you know? Well, this is, as much funny. as you want it to be about you. Uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because I loved managing. It was so much fun. Yeah, and I, I really, have, really, I missed, about the I really, really missed being a part of the show. And then I realized years later that managing i'm involved in one match when i'm commentating i'm involved in every match mm. um i don't know i don't i don't really worry about too much about it being about me if i can for me it's more when i get compliments from the guys that i help make their match better that's that means everything to me i don't really and again i'll sometimes i'll get carried away if i'm calling matches with andy anderson because we have history and we're good friends we tend to sometimes if you're off a little bit and I, I have to straighten myself out but no i don't really worry too much about you know, I just want to call a good show and have the show be good. I don't worry about, you know, getting myself over. Yeah, that makes sense. When, uh, the Bobby question said, I... great advice. Thank you. We'll, def he's, we'll mm -hmm. definitely try getting into talks with the team and we'll continue to aspire to get better each time. Yeah, it's all. Yeah. And, you know, with anything in life, you know, it's all about, like you said, reps and just getting, you know, just focus on getting better every time you do it. And then hopefully you get to a point where you're feeling good about what you're doing. You know? And I think um, you got to get excited too. Cause there's some, some shows I watch where um, something really big and cool is happening. Again, the guys are just kind of blindly talking about how he jumped off that ladder through eight tables. If I don't care about it, why are you going to care about it? Right. I'm like, Holy shit. That guy just dove off 18 ladders through 18 tables. Yeah. That know. makes sense. Yeah. No, you like, gotta get it. Look, if you're not getting excited, yeah, exactly. yeah, and like what are, that. what are wrong, in dude. all in all of sports? But you know, we're talking about wrestling. Like, what are the famous calls that you remember? The famous calls that you remember are the passionate ones. You remember mm -hmm. Jr. 
commentating when the undertaker throws mankind off the hell in a cell and he's like he's broken and like those are the ones now, we remember that, the you know that being said there is a line but, yes you know i i don't like commentators that that just yell when there's a big spot they just go ah i don't like yeah. that but again <laughs> yeah. that's, just, that's just my my style like everybody likes different things and doesn't like different things and yeah so when you were managing were you you were a heel manager. You said you I was heel. bad to the phone, baby. <laughs> All right, rock and roll. Now, were you a manager that would every so often you get your comeuppance? Were you like thrown around yeah. at all, like in the a ring? Little you, bit, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. I didn't know, like, if you had ever, you know, obviously you you, you weren't an in ring performer, but like if you, I've you had, know. I've I've been in a few battle royals. Okay, and I've I've had a few like nothing I would consider myself a wrestler by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, but I've been in a few battle royals and I have had a few matches and I have taken a few bumps over the years. Nothing crazy, but like yeah. I've, I've I've done my share and it's Just fun to get the... physical. It's a little bit scary sometimes, but yeah. again, I always trusted the guy that I was was there. You know, there's a couple of times where I had my bell rung. I had a candlestick broken over my head once, and that Ooh, that was probably not a little. That, I, that was like when I I don't think I've ever had a concussion other than that. Yeah. But I remember we were eating after, and I had like you know when you're when you're talking and just say words. This is a good sandwich. I'd have to like in my brain go, okay, you're gonna say this is a good sandwich, and then say this is a good sandwich. Wow. So that was a little bit scary. He rung my bell pretty good, but I haven't. Did really you know it was coming? Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. and he told me it was coming. Okay. Okay. So it was how great. do you how do you brace your yeah? How did you yeah? Like, how did you psych like, yourself out in yeah. that split second to be like oh god? <laughs> like, how, do you, how, go. how do you not? How do you not? Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I was I'm always ready. nervous, like behind the curtain. I was always super nervous, and then as soon as we went out there, the nerves kind of went away, and it was more just like I just want to make sure that I need to. Uh, uh, be I am not one to know in the PWA. That is not true at all. Just for the record, <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> I have very much oh, a no. losing record in the PWA. <laughs> but no, but once I got out there, it was just more like make sure that I hit my spots and be where I need to be. And and I I you know didn't get the only time I was really super nervous the whole time was when I had my match with Andy Anderson because that was like a one on. That was the only time I ever had like a one on one match. Gotcha. And that was it was nervous, but it went really well, and I was really happy with it. So. So, so okay, awesome. okay fair go. enough. I'm one and oh. Hey, hey, listen, okay, that's true. That's true. That's true. so so we're calling it one and oh. That's what we're calling it's it. It's his website, it's his you know? he can say whatever he wants. Um, well, I you all right, so uh, I am you, undefeated in Freddie Prince wrestling, by the way. I've never the, lost. There you go. Oh, it's Freddy, happening, guys. Freddy, you, you think we're messing around? Open. You're 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 messing we're around. In. The three of us are in. Let's go. I Freddy. know. Sign the deal. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, but I did want to ask, because you did mention that when you were you did that early, you know, you said it didn't sound great, but that early podcast that you interviewed Bobby Heenan. Bob there was this there. I wish I could remember some of the other guys. One time I uh, when TNA was around, I uh, had Jeremy Borash on. Oh, and it, this was just it was literally like recording my speakerphone with a computer microphone. It was very this was like this was it wasn't even in the year 2000. It was. It was in the late 90s because I remember I was, and I guess it would be early 2000s because I remember we were doing the show when WCW went under. But I had Jeremy Borash on and they had just hired Vince Russo as their booker. And I was like, oh, so are you guys excited about having Vince Russo as your booker? And he was like, why don't you ask him yourself? And he handed Russo the phone. I didn't even know he was there. And I ended up what? talking to him. And I, I, like, I wish you could see me because I just started sweating and I had nothing prepared to talk to Vince Russo. But yeah. it was, was kind of cool. He was like, but yeah, hey, he bro, he didn't, bro. <laughs> bro hey bro. hey bro uh no because Bo bobby heenan for me and i know he you know he's not classified as a wrestler but if you're just if you're generalizing everyone as like a wrestling person a wrestling whatever bobby heenan's like a top three one of the greatest of all time, all time. In everything that he did yeah. everything no matter what it was he was amazing funny when you, when he wanted you to boo him, he did, he said enough to get you to really, uh, you know. But and he, he was, was hilarious. just so quick. He was quick. Yes, like he just come up with something like that. He yeah. he yeah. is on my Mount Rushmore of wrestling personalities, like without question. I yeah. love Bobby the Brain Heenan. I know he wrestled a lot, like in the early days before, uh, you know. And he and he was one of those managers that got very physical. Like they I was would say, that's a guy that took him. bumps for sure. Yes, that's and that's why I asked when you were a manager, like, hey, were you? Did you ever have any of those moments where, like, you got your comeuppance and the crowd there was, was like, a few. yeah, he's finally getting his <laughs> ass kicked. Like, this 
jerk, whatever. There was, um, there was another time I got hit with a super kick so hard, and if you slow it back, I wear glasses, and I yeah. was wearing old glasses. Uh, he, uh, my head went back, so it was super quick, but it was like a, a road runner thing. My head went back, and the glasses stayed in in place, and then fell down. <laughs> oh, that's amazing! I can't, I can't oh. find that clip. I had it for years, but I can't find it now. But if you watch, the head goes back, and the glasses and the glasses back. stay there. Yeah. Oh, just and like Wardsmith just play. saying like that. Like, in my opinion, the the Bobby Heenan's performance in the 1992 Royal Rumble is like, yeah. Top tier, top echelon of any, like it is just from the start to the end, the greatest commentary performance, like in an individual, it's so good. And I bet he was exhausted by time that was oh done. Oh my God. There's, yeah, he, there's some shows like that last Love Wrestling show, especially after that main event. And by no means am I comparing myself to the guys in the ring, but I was tired. I was like, yeah. I'm going home to bed. I'm tired. <laughs> Yeah. So I bet that because he put everything he had into that, and I bet he was he was ready for a nap after that one. But yeah, I was absolutely. gonna say, like, yeah, you're out there for the whole three, four hour, whatever the show length may be, you're there. Like, do you how what if you gotta go to the bathroom? Do you, do you, I know they'd make they, they probably they do end of missions on the indie. I scene. make sure that I pee right before it starts because I'm definitely an energy drink guy and I pound back the energy drinks as Partially because I like them and B, it's something for me to do with my hands while the show's going on. But then, yeah, that intermission, you can see me. And right now, the bathroom closest to the room where the, the show is, is out of order. It has been the last couple of shows. Oh, so no. I'm running through the arcade during intermission. I'm in there. There's lots of time, but I want to make sure that I get there yeah. and get back. Because lo and behold, someone's going to come who's in the second half of the show and say, we're doing this, 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 and you got to do this, this, and this. So I want to make sure I'm around to talk to people. But yeah, go I to, definitely pee. <laughs> go to energy drink. Yeah. Um, if I'm a rich man, it's Red Bull, okay. but Red Bull is expensive, so I'm a rock star. Plain rock star, black yeah. can, and they're All right, always fair. on sale. That's fair. That's what I had for breakfast this morning. Yep. <laughs> breakfast of champions, you know, breakfast of champions. Um, uh, and then have... I was gonna follow. Uh, how how much home? So like, you get a fresh, you get the card as the let's say Spencer at LPW as he announces it. When do you start the like research? Because like you said, you got to know these people. In and out, you've got to come up with interesting ways to keep me as the viewer entertained. I mean, not so much the crowd because the crowd's not really listening to you, it's me at home. Yeah. So, like, how much extensive research goes into each one of these matches that you're commentating it's, on? Most of the guys I know pretty well. It's the new talent that come in that I that I and Spencer's pretty good about providing me with some sheets with some stuff on it. Plus, I'll do research on my own and I'll go to cage match. And uh, the best research is just to talk to the guys themselves. Like, we've got uh uh, T.Y. Jackson having his first match mm -hmm. in, in love and he and I lived in my PWA bubble for so long that there's a lot of guys who work for other companies that I don't know so I just hit him up on Instagram and I said tell me a bit about your character your gimmick and any names of moves so that way and, and for me the most important part is just remembering the stories we're telling from previous shows because we've got some long-term things that are going on yeah. from show to show so it's making sure to keep people uh, up to date on what's happening so I can help tell the story going forward with what's happening with <clears throat> with Chris Parrish and Zoe Sager and, and MRB and, you know, whoever else has that has a long term story going, which is pretty much everybody. That's yeah. one of the things that Spencer's and the guys who have been doing the booking, everybody really has something going on for the most part. There's no matches that are just for the sake of matches. Yeah. And that's so my, and that, go, oh, sorry. Go oh, no, no, you're good. So I wanted to follow up with that real quick. And you don't you you don't have to answer it if you don't want to. How hard is Spencer on the commentary team? Is he in your ear going? You have is he, to is he like Vince? Is he in Vince? Going, say this. You. Say it now. I don't. I don't. Uh, Spencer's been great. He really has. But no, there's nobody yelling in my in my ear like. And I don't know how I. I don't know how they do that. I think if somebody was in my ear while I was trying to talk, it'd be very distracting. But no, I I don't envy him though because it's it's and I've seen it before with Kurt and other companies I work for. It's hard to run the circus. Yeah. And the thing yeah. you hear the most. Uh, from the time that I get to the building to the time the show's over, the thing I hear the most is, where's Spencer? Where's Spencer? And it's not that he's hiding. It's just that everybody needs a piece of him for different yeah. things. Um, yeah. But no, he's he's been great. He, kind of he, like, and, he and the thing with him, next that he, week, we'll ask him. And the thing that he's told me and that, that makes me feel good is he's like, I trust you to, to know what you're doing. And he has the confidence in me that he, he doesn't really need to babysit me. He just says, go do your thing. And he's... Yeah. He's said that everything's good, so no news is good news, and we just go. And we can, yeah. we can, we can, we can attest to that. He's very yeah. like, hey, what's your idea? 
Go yeah, he's, it. he's, it's very similar for us. Yeah. Like when we have ideas or like, you know, if we're like, Hey, we want to try to get this person on or, or Hey, you, we're going to do this on social media. He's very much like that. He goes, Hey, I trust, I trust you guys. Like I know yeah, so you're going to do it the right way. Up. Like, you know, do you have, have you ever worked for somebody that's like, Nope, I want it exactly how it's written down. Make it happen. Don't go off. Cause that can't be fun to work for it, especially in an artistic creative setting, like commentary or managing or podcasting, if you will. To be honest, no, everyone has just kind of let me go and do my thing. Um, and I, I don't, I've not really gotten a lot of point. I'm not trying to like toot my own horn that I'm that good or whatever, but I haven't really gotten a lot of, feedback from other promoters some of the promoters don't really care about the video and in the past that i've worked for they just want to make sure there's butts and seats and the show starts on time and and everything's cool and they just like like, like pwa i would i would film and edit and commentate and do all that and just put it out and like here kurt here's your show and he's like okay cool thanks um so no not really some of the you know and the guys have all been really cool and they'll they'll give me things that they want to get across. Like Jack Pride took me aside a couple of shows ago and said, "There's certain things I'm going to be doing in terms of my changing and stuff." And those are pointers for me that are good, so I can look out for those because I'd never want to miss anything. No. Because God forbid I miss a key point of that story, and then the whole thing kind of falls apart. Yeah. And we have our friend Bobby, who he had asked a couple of questions early. He says, "You can't find better advice than this, Boris, my friend. This is just incredible advice. I'm taking notes like crazy over here. Thank you." And Spencer behind the glass saying, I've said this for a while and I stand by it. Boris is the best commentator in Canada. So that's heavy that praise means, from the it boss. Means, it means so much, though. It really does mean a lot because it's something that I try hard to, to do well in. And I've had some of the guys say that, oh, you know, I've never had a commentator come to me and ask me about my my gimmick character moves and stuff. But like it helps mm -hmm. me make the show better. And that's ultimately what the point of the whole thing is, is to make the show better. Yeah. And I know Plugo had asked you earlier about like inspirations or people that you liked in now, but like, so when you, you know, you said you started commentating when you were making these videos for PWA and then you kind of realized like, oh, I really like this. When you were first, when you first identified that this was something you really liked and Hey, maybe I want to be a commentator. Like were there certain old school comment? I know we've talked about Heenan and Gorilla. Like, did you go back and watch some old wrestling just to listen to the comment? Like, were you like doing anything that way or was it just, I don't, kinda, hey, I'm just going to go with the flow? I, I didn't. And I don't on purpose, like go back for specific okay. for commentators. I just watch a lot of wrestling in general because I like wrestling, but I have a pen and a pad. And anytime there's a buzzword that I hear just a word, not a phrase, but a word, I'm like, Oh, that's a cool word. I'd write it on the little pad. So I have that word and it's never I sense kind of, it's literally just words i'm like oh that's a cool word so like i just write like it down and i added I, yeah and i added in it kind of into my vernacular so to speak yeah but when i when cool. i first started doing it we we i, I didn't do it live we or recorded live we i did it after the fact and i go back and listen to those now and i hate them because it's it's not as much of a genuine, like it doesn't sound as good, but it's also not as much of a genuine response because by the time I'm doing the commentary, I've seen that match already twice. I saw yeah. it live that night and then I saw it when I edited the video. Yeah. And I have to give credit to MRB. MRB is the one, like, because I would do the music at the shows, the PW shows, and in Edmonton, I would run the video screen as well. And he's like, why don't you just record it live while we're doing it? And I was worried because I'm trying to do music, trying to run the screen. And inevitably, there's always somebody in my ear. But it was MRB who said, try doing it live when we did it the one time. And it was so much better. And it made the editing so much faster so that we just did it like that all the time. But if I go back and watch those ones where I would do it by myself in my living room after, and like the audio quality was terrible. And it's just, it's not as genuine a reaction. Yeah. Which before we dive into LPW five, the card, I do want to follow up to that. How much of the match results or if anything, do you get given to you before this? So you, are you watching it as a fan live as it happens? And then say MRB wins that triple threat at LPW four. Did you know that ahead of time or were you just as shocked as everybody else? For the most part, everything that I've done, I know just about everything. Every so often, there's like sometimes there's there's finishes that'll change and that that kind of surprise me. And sometimes there's there's things that are going to happen that I don't know. Like there was a thing a few years ago where the Millennial Rebels cut MRV's hair, and I wasn't told about that on purpose. And when I saw the scissors come out, I was like, "Oh shit!" And it was a more of a genuine reaction because I didn't know what was going to happen. But for the most part, I know 
99% of, of what's going to happen. And I kind of prefer it that way most of the time, again, because I don't want to miss a point of the story that we're trying to tell. Uh, yeah. Because sometimes, sense. like I've said this before, sometimes guys can do things that can be a little too subtle. And, and I like to make sure that those things that they're doing that may be a little too subtle get pointed out. Like I've mentioned before on, on my podcast, we're talking about, well, I'm going to do this thing that I did in this match that, this, that him and I had two years ago in Red Deer. Well, I'm sorry, but no one was going to remember the match you had two years ago in Red Deer. But if I know about that, I can say, this is what they did this time ago, and now he's bringing it back or whatever, whatever. Like sense. there were things in the Ravenous Randy and uh, um, – uh, MRB match that you know, yeah, the toasted bagel. He hasn't used that move since he was you know 18 years old, but that's a cool callback that I know that I can call back and it, it mean it helps it mean more. That's yeah, especially, cool. I think those two didn't wrestle for what was it 10 years before that first showdown? At it was a long interview. time, yeah, it was, it was a long, long time. time. Well, here we are, LPW5 Anarchy in the Yeg. I don't want to say Y-E-G, yeah. G, that's our is it Y-E-G? Yeah. It's is it Y-E-G? Y-E-G? All right. Okay. Yeah, it's our, it's it's the airport. I don't know if they have those in the states, but we have airport codes here. Uh, like Calgary's is YYC and Vancouver's is YVR and Edmonton's is YEG. All right, cool. Oh, um, that's good yeah. to know because I saw that and I was like, is the Ye- me the being Yeg a stupid thing? American? I'm like, is the Yeg like a nickname for the city? Do they what? All right, I never, I never, uh, I never bothered to ask. But, there, clear um, clarification. Now we know that makes sense. Now. We're learning, we're learning. Yeah, all listen, we're, we're, we're figuring it out too. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is next Friday, June 24th at the rec room. Cool looking, ve- obviously I've never stepped like physically been in there, it's, but it's, it's a, a cool fantastic looking venue. venue. Yeah. It's for, a cool for looking so venue. Many reasons. Yeah. Um, uh, the way it's filled you- with the different levels and the big screen and the full bar and the food and the, yeah. the quality of the sound. It's a fantastic venue. I really yeah. like it. And it comes, it, it comes through the streams when you see it, like you see it and you're like, Oh, that's a cool looking. It looks you like that really does. Yeah. Um, Plugo, you have a specific uh, match? Oh, or I was just going to ask, like, which, yeah. what are you looking forward to on this match card that it's taking shape really nice? I know that Zoe, um, Giselle Shaw couldn't make it. I'm personally looking forward to seeing Willow Nightingale in a LPW ring because I'm just yes. a huge fan of Willow uh, against Zoe Sager. But what match is a commentator? Are you going, I can't wait to call that. This is the match on Friday that I'm looking forward to the most. I was sad to see that Giselle can't make it because she kind of broke in with with PWA and I've known her for a long time and I was looking forward to just connecting with her personally and chatting. Yeah. But I'm really excited to have Willow Nightingale come in and I think her and Zoe are going to tear it up. There's a couple of debuts. My arch nemesis, Andy Anderson, is going to be making his debut. Um, that main event. Uh, well, he's part. our arch nemesis now too. <laughs> after the, if I'm going to put my kayfabe hat on, but after the bullshit those guys tried to pull after MRB killed himself, to run into that match like that after yeah. uh, showed their true colors. Uh, and I'm sure that Mitch Clark's going to be looking to make MRB's title reign a short one. I'm drawing a blank at what all the matches are now. So we have that. We have Jack Pride. Refresh versus... my memory. I meant to have it in front of me. No, it's all good. We have it. Jack Pride against, is it a Ty Jackson or T.Y. Jackson? It's T.Y. Jackson. T.Y. Jackson. I'm a big Jack Pride fan. I love the character and I love the guy. I've heard a lot. I've seen T.Y. Jackson. I've gone to a couple of RCWs and I've seen him. Very, very talented. And I think those guys are going to tear it up. Rachel Ellering coming back to Alberta yes, for the first time in yep. a long time. Yep. Uh, I I actually Bobby really Sharp will be there as Bobby well. Bobby Sharp, yeah. I believe I commentated Rachel Ellering's very first match. I may be wrong on that. Her first match may have been in RCW, but I think it might have been in PWA. And if it's true, then I called her very first match. So it's going to be cool to have her back. Uh, Bobby Sharp coming back after a big surgery. He looks like he's in fantastic shape. He mm-hmm. was hanging out at the last show. Great to see him back in the ring as well. There's so much going on on the show. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. And that's about it. Taryn from accounting defending that love wrestling championship. Well, she's actually going up against Rachel Ellering yeah, that we mentioned yeah. just a few seconds ago. So she's defending yeah. the LPW championship. Well, put some respect on the best accounting yeah. in the business. Yeah. Name, there you baby. go. For a singles match was in PWA. And you better believe Boris called it. That's what it's saying right there. So. <laughs> And Taryn from accounting is an awesome person and, and the strides that she's made in, in her in-ring work over the past couple of years is phenomenal. She's the love wrestling challenge champion for a reason. And uh, I, it's going to be tough to take that belt away from her. Yeah. And yeah, I know um, we had mentioned Mitch Clark, Mitch Clark and a plug you might've mentioned already, but he was a friend of the show, been on the show, yeah. super nice guy. So uh, 
It's lining up to be another terrific show for Love. I still Rustin. don't know why Spencer keeps booking Mitch because he keeps saying that he's bringing that violence. He's yeah, he said we asked him, hey, for somebody who you know, for somebody who might be new to Mitch Clark when he was here, what it what it what what sticks out about you? And he goes, I bring the violence. And we I were bring like, the I violence. Said, that works for me, my friend. I, I hey, like he's, he's he's tapped everybody out. Yeah. yeah. So it the record should be a doozy. for itself. It's it's not just hyperbole. It's it's. He, he backs up what he says, and that makes a guy real dangerous. Yes, and I think like Bobby says in the chat, this will not be the nice side of Mitch Clark on the 24th. Uh, yeah, it should be it should be a good one. Uh, it should be a very, very good one. Um, all right, usually when we have guests on the show, uh, to sort of end the show a little bit, we have ourselves... On a fun note. We like yeah, to have a little fun here. Yeah, we have ourselves a draft battle, and we usually uh, let the guest pick the topic uh and we so we reached out to boris a little earlier kind of if you guys want to overrule me go right ahead no no no. oh i kind of took that i was gonna before we get into the draft why didn't anybody tell me my shirt's on inside out i I, I didn't know i just thought you were wearing like a fancy white shirt i just looked down and i'm like wait a minute (laughs) well nobody knew you just outed yourself bro i don't think anybody knew your shirt was inside out God. Way to out yourself, man. Jeez. I appreciate no. your honesty, though. He's I do too. I, yes, it's noble. What? It's noble. It's a noble honesty. <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> oh my god. Well, yeah, we reached out to Boris earlier. Anyway, we yeah. said, "Hey, we're going to end on the draft." We usually like to end on a little like lighter, fun note. Uh, and what you said were uh, people that you want to see have the chance in Ring of Honor. So I kind of was thinking it'll be a five round draft. Obviously, three of us. So like, if we, why don't we make it like we're create like we're booking ring of honor and it will be our five picks to build the company around of sorts or oh, something like that. I don't know if I have five picks oh, anyway. No. All right. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah, that's what <laughs> well, we listen here. You, if you want to be a part of the Freddie Prince Jr. Wrestling <laughs> company club, we're having draft. No, we're having well, it. Uh, there's backstage politics already here. Yeah. I know. I know. Well, ideally we're going to have to think of, 15 people because if you have somebody on your on your list and Plugo and I take them they're off you got to think of somebody yeah. else so hopefully oh the rules this, are very stringent I know I know we 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 drive we a hard a ship, ship over here yeah we run a tight <laughs> hard ship over a, here we even have a in between graphic. I know we even have a graphic so we'll let our producer Ooh. behind the glass ecto what? guy Alex he will play our draft battle graphic and we will come back <laughs> and us three bearded individuals will draft Try. our ring of honor Draft, but it is time now for the Between Two Beards Draft Battle! Boom. That was fucking awesome. Right? That's what I'm saying. Alex, killing it back there. Alex, we know. All right. I'm going to tell you something. Tomorrow, I'm going to say about 145 Mountain Time, which is going to be about 345 Eastern Eastern Time. If you listen, Towards Edmonton, Alberta, you're gonna hear me at work go draft battle. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> Dope. He showed us that, and he was like, oh, "I came up with this," and I was like, "This is incredible." Yeah. He was like, this "What do you incredible. guys think?" Let me tweet. He, he he always gets so like, "I'm like, bro, that was awesome." Like, yeah. He's that like, and, the, and the Star Wars uh, slide he did is even better. But you yeah. are you a Star Wars fan, Bar- Bar- Yeah. Star? I watched the original Star Wars and then I tried to watch the prequels and then I didn't know what the hell was going on. And yeah. then I watched the new one with the with the girl. Yeah. The first one. And I liked that. And then mm-hmm. I watched the second one with the girl. And I think I liked that too. Yeah. And then I was like, hey, wrestling's on. And I went and watched wrestling. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's fair. Rui, That's fair. Rui with the comment saying Boris rocks. That's fact. Boris. That is facts. Boris. That is facts. So we're going to draft the, uh, the guest always goes first. We are going to book our ring of honor five that we would start. a company Yeah. Yeah. With. I'll say, yeah. Like if, if we were in charge of, of the talent relations and ring of honor and we had, you know, a five round draft, obviously in a three, you know, we'll pick Fre- our five. Freddie Prince. If you're listening. Yeah. Freddie Prince. If you're listening, <laughs> we book like you're talking jam. to the future commentator. And Booker and your official podcast people, <laughs> pay attention, Freddie. Anyway, so when I thought about about Ring of Honor and it, the purchase from AEW and and them potentially, hopefully relaunching it, I was always thinking uh, uh, young 
kind of almost like a feeder system. And yeah. the first guy that popped into my head, and he's a guy that I've been high on for a long time, and he's actually under contract to AEW right now, and that is Lee Moriarty. I'm a big, mm. big uh, Lee Moriarty yes. guy. I would yeah. like to see him get used a little bit more than what he's doing on. But again, there's only so much TV time to go around. And when you've got yeah. guys like Moxley and Danielson, someone like Lee Moriarty is obviously going to get shoved aside. But I thought he'd be a perfect guy to take from that AEW pop into ROH, get him some TV time, some exposure. And I think he's really, really talented young guy. Yeah. That's that was great, on my list. So yeah, he was on my list. Yeah, that was a great for, yeah. You're li- so he's off me and Plugo's All list. Right. Plugo, I'll let you go second. I'll oh, that's, second. that's easy then because I'm going to, and this isn't because I'm tooting the boss's horn tonight, but Willow Nightingale. I'm All excited right. to, to call that I, match and meet her. I'm really looking forward to it. Because not, I am a huge fan of her. And not only is, again, she'll be at LPW5 next week. And so, of course, it's a shameless plug. But she's over and she's not signed mm-hmm. AEW. Like we talked last night. She's she single-handedly, because she's so over with that crowd. And a lot of those women, for whatever reason, don't get a ton of big pops unless you're the Roses and Brits of the world. And she's getting mm-hmm. just as big pops. And she's turning, she turned Red Velvet heel. I'd like to see her. Get I was like, there. I was there when that happened. Make her the point of your women's division in ROH, and I think that that would be insanely good. What's the AEW vibe like at the live show? It's if fun. I can quickly veer off. Yeah, there. yeah. No, yeah. it's fun. Yeah, I've been to I've been to like four AEW shows. Um, it's fun. Like you oh, can you're, tell you're close to Chicago, and they're there like every. Well, like, I'm, two I'm weeks. Cl- yeah, Plugo close to Chicago. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Bo- I'm sorry. No, it's all good. I'm in Boston, so I've right, been right, to. Right. They've done three dynamites in Boston, and then I traveled for an AEW show. But oh, okay. I think I think what I can explain is like everyone is there to have have fun. Like you walk in and you can feel the vibe of the whole audience that everyone's there to have a blast, and they're there to like truly enjoy the wrestling show. So the vibe is like super positive they do a good job of like in between the things too like justin roberts is really good with the crowd like keeping them entertained when they're on commercials i was there tony khan comes out like three or four times and like is very demonstrative he can't and yelling resist and, it though he can't no resist. no he loves it he i'm loves surprised it. he's not the authority on screen authority figure yeah because he can't so, help himself so he comes out he <laughs> and he gets you all riled up so like when you when they come back from commercial and you hear the crowd roaring it's because either Justin Roberts or Tony Khan or whatever's in the ring is making that like they very much they want you to have a blast and you do. Oh, it's it's give really us good. Your, give us your really best good. Tony Khan. Let's go. I, I can't. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't even like it doesn't even finish all the syllables. Um, Let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, my first pick um, is along the lines of kind of a Boris, like a younger guy. He's in a, he's in a prominent group right now of sports entertainers in AEW, but my pick would be Daniel Garcia. I think Daniel, Daniel Garcia, Garcia he, what is he? 23, 24 years old, already one of the better technical wrestlers in the world. I would say this year, the last calendar year for him, he's been on AEW television against every big name you can imagine. He had a Matt, Match with Moxley, match, match like so many big matches for a guy that young. He fought Minoru Suzuki on the on the independence. Like he's been in some big spots. I think he would be a perfect wrestler to kind of build a young core. You you know, AEW calls them the pillars. If you were gonna build pillars in Ring of Honor, I think Daniel Garcia, and I agree with the Lee Moriarty pick as well, and and Willow to an extent. Like they they seem like pillars that you could build your company around for the next 10 years and you know big I mean? kudos to uh to jericho because all he's done is just make groups of of young guys and give them yep. a rub and i think that's so awesome all right so boris you now have your uh your second pick all right this is a guy that i am a huge huge fan of i think that he may not necessarily fit but I also think that he's pigeonholed as a deathmatch guy, but I don't think he has to be because he can work. He's got a, a very cool charisma about him and a presence, and that is Atticus Kogart. I'm a big, big fan of Atticus Kogar. He doesn't need he doesn't have to do death matches. And I'm a deathmatch supporter. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big deathmatch guy. But he can work. He's got a very kind of quiet Jake the Snake speak, you know. If you speak softly and have something to say, everyone will listen. Kind of a guy, and I'm mm-hmm. a big, big Atticus Colger guy. All right, I like he's that. Good, I like that. I don't necessarily know too. if he fits in into that, but I mean, you know, you got to have a little bit of everything. 
Yeah. And yeah, very yeah. underrated promo guy. I totally agree. Yeah, very, very underrated. For my second pick, and it's because I spent all Sunday watching his matches Sunday night, Speedball Mike Bailey. Oh, incredible. I incredible. Just love, incredible. I, just, I just love him. So if you, we have these drafts going forward, I, he might end up on all of them. I just, he has the most beautiful drop kick I've ever seen. And I think he would fit the Ring of Honor vibe. That's so fair. Far. So far, I'm because good. I'm assuming my five will face your five, so I would be down to see Kogar and Speedball mix it up. Yeah, I wonder where he would be if he hadn't have unfortunately had those border issues. Yeah, or if maybe in a roundabout sort of way it was a good thing. I think it know, was. I think it ended up back with this buzz and like yeah. Mania weekend. Mania weekend, he killed. He had like 110 matches, and they were all awesome. Yeah, and yeah, he just. I was listening to a podcast earlier. He just fought Moxley this past weekend. And it was supposed to be just a, a wonderful match, as you would expect it to be. Speedball really doesn't have bad matches. Neither does Moxley for the most part. But Speedball, at least you want to talk about wrestler of the year type match performances. I mean, he's got to be he's got to be up there. He's got to be up there. Um, well, I'm not going the younger route with my second pick. I'm taking just because I want to see it. I'm taking uh, Brian Daniels. I would I would like to see Brian Danielson make the young a, upstart. Brian. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and I would like to see Brian Danielson make his return to Ring of Honor and kind of beat up some of the of the younger or what you know. Like, here's the thing for me, my I never saw Ring of Honor Brian Danielson. I saw Daniel Bryan, and then I've seen AEW Brian Danielson, which I think a at least from what I've been told. AEW Brian Danielson is like a more souped up ver a combination of both to an extent, but like the way he's wrestling with like being more violent and more vicious and things like that. That was more of the Ring of Honor Brian Danielson. Like the, that's pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I've heard, but I ne I've never in I never live saw Brian Danielson in Ring of Honor. So I think it would be cool for Brian Danielson. And obviously, I know it wouldn't be an extended run in Ring of Honor, but to have him go back and maybe have a small couple month run. I think that would be even do the Jericho cool. thing and, and give some of the young guys the exactly. Run, you know? exactly build the future build the future. Yeah, yeah. So that that would be my second pick. So is this back to me now? Back to you, yeah. 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 All right, third round. round. Uh, we're gonna go with the female route now, and I've been kind of toying between a couple of them. I've been toying between Billy Starks and Masha Slamovich. Mm -hmm. They're very, very wow. different kind of uh uh, uh ends of the spectrum yes um billy starks very much like like white meat baby face type girl and mm -hmm. i'm gonna go masha though because masha slavovich she is a small tiny girl that will pull your face right off of your of your head she, she you. brings she brings that intensity she has really 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 good matches and she gets over and ring of honor really kind of their, their women's division never really kind of took off the way that they wanted it to, mm -hmm. but there's somebody that's going to bring, because so, ROH women's matches, they were just kind of there. There wasn't a lot of that real intensity and she's going to bring that thunder and, and, and make you, make you notice. Yeah. Masha's fantastic. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Masha's. And so is Billy Starks. I've, I've been, she's been on the show. I've been following her career for a little while. I, to this day have said, if she was in any other sport, at the level that she's at right now, she'd be national news. She'd like be one of those local. Serena Williams. Yes. Kind of she'd young be, if prodigy. she was a tennis player, if she was in basketball or whatever, maybe we'd be talking about how she's next. She's the next greatest, whatever, but because it's wrestling, nobody outside of our bubble cares, which mm. is sad, but you took Masha off the board for me. Um, and speaking of the women's division and having a little bit of an edge to it and keeping with that, I think that the ROH, I've envisioned the ROH women's division having a little grittiness to it. So with the Masha thing, I'm going to take Trisha Dora. I know that mm. she kind of flirted with the ROH thing before they shut down um, because I think she should just be signed. I don't know why she's not signed everywhere all the time. She's fantastic. And then again, it works out. You took Masha. I got Trish. That'd be an awesome uh, women's title match in my book. Uh, yeah, it definitely would be. Um, well, I was going the female route as yeah, well, well. We just well, good luck. You go lose uh, this one. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. And I do love, I do love how you mentioned Billy Stark. She wasn't who I was thinking of, but with her age and how good she already is, she's she's been on this show. We've interviewed her on this show. She's a friend of of the Between Two Beards. So I'm going to kind of pivot my pick 
And because Boris kind of threw her name in my brain and she's so good and so young and someone that could be in the division and learn more and more from the veterans that you might have her be in the ring with. And then she's someone that can carry your division for however long you want at her age. I'm going to take Billy Starks. I'm going to do that. Look what you did, Boris. You gave him. Sorry. He, he threw her name out there, and I was like, oh, she's like 17, 18 years old. Like, what? She's already yeah. so damn good. She wrestles everybody and has killer matches, and that would make sense. So I stole that from Boris. So That's all right. My apologies. But I'm giving. I appreciate that. I appreciate you being a nice gentleman. <laughs> uh, it is. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So this brings it back to me, right? Back to you for your yes, fourth, sir. second to last pick. Again, we want. I think we want guys that can work, and we also want guys that are that are personalities who can cut promos, who can put butts in seats, and who guys who you want to see get punched in the face. Juice Robinson. Mm. Ooh, nice, good call. I like that. I like that a lot. So is he still in New Japan? I saw that they sent him home, or we're going to strip him of the title. Did he actually show up at Dominion? Does anybody know? I he he oh. did. He just won. The I believe it was the United States title, and he just joined Bullet Club. Okay, so he's still because I thought I saw some rumor maybe it was spec that he was quitting or getting stripped or not showing up. Maybe it was all just story. I don't. Again, I admit I don't follow enough New Japan. I need to. I need. I've to just gotten the- kind of. I gotten bit by the bug, and I'm kind of back into it a little bit. I watched most okay. of Dominion. There's a lot of filler with like the multi man tag matches, but the aces always still deliver. All the big names still put on mm-hmm. good matches. All right, rock and roll. All right, Plugo. Uh, this is why Fourth I hate pick. only having five rounds. Of this, I know because we could we could do this for a while. Yeah, we that I would want. There's going to be a lot of heavy hitters around. left off the board because of the only five picks. But if I'm gonna, I would sign Ace Austin. Oh my God! Yeah, I was gonna. You, okay. I would take okay. Ace Austin and that. make him the focal point of my future men's world championship division because i think he's got all the tools he just joined Boyle club too i know that but he's the guy that i would i would i would build this uh the whole division around yeah i'm a fan yeah ace austin is fantastic all right well that was going to be my pick Damn, <laughs> uh Great. you know what i'm gonna go with dante martin i'm gonna go with dante Ooh, martin. another dante young martin. Another young guy that we've seen put, be put into some big spotlights in AEW this past year when his brother has been injured, fought Kenny Omega, like he's had, he's had some big matches and he's hung he's hung in there with he's the stuff he can do is incredible from a physical standpoint. He's young, he's again like what 19, 20, 21 years old, super he's duper young. 21. He's very young. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go Dante Martin. I think that's someone that you can look at and be like he could be a top guy for us for the next decade. So R- ROH always had their their more than their share of the high flyers as oh, well. Yeah. So it fits so, the mold. Yeah, I'm gonna take Dante Mountain. All right, Boris. Last round. All right. Fifth pick. Start right. us off here. Now I'm not saying this because I'm trying to kiss ass, <laughs> and I'm not saying this because it's Is he taking it's, Spencer Love. No, I'm not <laughs> saying this because I'm trying to kiss ass or whatever. Or, or because he's a good friend of mine, but Michael Richard Blaze yep. deserves to be on national television. Uh, ju- he, he can, he can do just a, like a li- he's good at everything. He can do it all, can cut the promos. He's a great worker. He's a compelling character that, that makes you want to pay attention. And, and, and the fact that he's not on TV somewhere is, is a shame. We can't, mm-hmm. I can't disagree. And I'm not saying it to kiss ass because he's my friend. No, no. I, we put our friends over all the time. This is the show. We, if you're a friend of ours, we support you to the death. That's what friends are for, man. No, Michael Richard Blaze is fantastic. We, uh, when we did the first uh, LPW preview show back when the thing started, Spencer gave us some of his promo work, and from that moment, I was like, "This guy's got it. He's legit." And then all of his matches that I've seen are fantastic. So that's a good shout. I've been See, very, this- very lucky to call many, many, many MRV matches, and it's always a lot of fun. Uh, he seems like he's got, and I, I mean. Just on the, I don't know him, you know him, but he seems like he's got a great mind for the business. Yeah. Like you could tell in his promos, like how invested he's not just cutting a promo to cut a promo. Yeah. He's belie- he's making you believe what he's saying. He believes it. You know what I mean? It's and he's helped me with, with a lot of things personally and creatively as well. Yeah. I can't say enough good things. Awesome. Yeah. Shout there. So this is where I'm at. I don't know. Again, I have a few options. I'm like sitting here and I'm thinking ROH and I'm throwing out like, 
names and I don't want to give JPJ a dynamite fifth pick. So I'll talk mm. about a couple, but I'm going to go with Blake Christian. I love Blake Christian. Great. I feel great, great, great. he is. So he got, a, he was signed to WWE in that NXT vibe right before they decided to go the 2.0 route. Like he was yeah. like, if you would have signed him six months earlier, he might've had a hell of a run in NXT and been somebody, but he, but I think that that actually helped him because he came back to the independent scene, like with a chip on his shoulder out to prove that he was going to just take over the world. And he had a killer match with little Osprey a couple months back. And I was there live and the whole time my jaw is just down. The dude is as advertised. And we're so, starting to see personality come up. Yes. Yes. He's always he's got... had great matches, but that chip mm -hmm. on the shoulders kind of manifested into personality and, he, and he's doing promos now and he's rounding himself out as a performer. Big, big fan. So if I'm Tony Khan and I'm thinking of filling out an ROH roster, like I would be giving him a call and seeing if he's available. Ah, oh, man, those are some good picks. I'm in trouble here. But John I'm, Cena. No, yeah, imagine. <laughs> the Rock. Uh, no. Uh, I'm going the female route again, and I'm taking another veteran again. But I think, you know, when I was talking about the Billy Starks pick, saying, like, you know, having those veterans, I I, I, I already like the fact that Mercedes Martinez is the Ring of Honor Women's Champion. I think that's someone, whenever they do start running shows or getting their own TV or streaming, whatever – that is a veteran that you want on your roster. So you those young people that you have high hopes for in the future can just pick their brains, wrestle, just and learn from. And the person that I'm actually gonna pick is Serena Deeb. Oh, I think she's been Serena, killing it lately. She's been incredible. She's been in that same show where Red Velvet kind of the Willow Nightingale stuff. Uh, I got to see one of the Sheeta Serena Deeb matches live. In my opinion, the best one of the three or four that they've had. Um, she's incredible. And her matches, this again, I keep on saying this calendar, even the her the matches she's had since she's come back from that injury in AEW have just been insanely good. Yeah. And she's so good. I think she's a perfect character for Ring of Honor. She's kind of just that tough as nails. I'm gonna beat the crap out of you, like veteran. Like, no, you're not, you know, you're not good, you're not better than me. I'm the the master of this, like you're the disciple, like kind of thing. I just like the vibe. I think the vibe would fit kind of being a heel Ring of Honor women's champion. Uh, I like me some Serena Deeb to round out. Uh, she'll do some yoga and then she'll punch you in the face. There you go. <laughs> perfect. Yeah. That's perfect for me. All right, cool. So we have our our, our usually our buddy, uh, our producer, Ecto Guy. He already has them all did it. Down. Already he already sent us the message. So we'll put those on the social medias in the next coming days, and we'll let the fans kind of vote on uh, – which I ring of honor good, that's, a, that's a solid 15 talent, I think. I, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, and yeah. Talking, I think so. I was thinking Nick Wayne because he's so young. Nick Wayne's another good one. Alex Kane, a friend of ours. Show, How like, good is, is Nick Wayne going to be in like five years? That's when what he, I'm saying. When, like he's, like when he's 20. Exactly, exactly. exactly. When he's like 21 or whatever the you hell it's going to be, right? put him on TV, teach him the TV ways of things, get him in the ring with some veterans, like, and just let him groom him to become – oh, man, you'd have like your next – when his braces come off, he's going to be awesome, right? <laughs> when he's able to legally drive a car, like yeah, exactly. How yeah, I crazy feel bad. Is that? It's insane to me that how young and like it, you see in like the Billy Starks, the Nick Waynes yeah. of the world, Dante Martin's really young. You're seeing it like uh, Daniel Garcia when he broke out and started getting. He was like 18. Like it's crazy to me to see how young talent is getting so are so good and so over in such a sport that people are like, cause I, we asked Billy, we said, Billy, like, what did you say to your parents when you're like, I want to do professional wrestling? You know, like most kids are like, I want to go play out, you know, play football or baseball or the mall. Right. Yeah. And she's like at 14 going, I want to go wrestle Shotzi Blackheart on the independence. Is that cool? And they're like, yeah, yeah. For it. It's incredible. It's insane. It's to think how, yeah. How young, how, and not only how young they are, but like, how already really good they are. You know what I mean? Like, that's the crazy thing. Like, yeah, there have been wrestlers that have always started young, but, like, I don't know if there's been a lot of wrestlers that have been this good as young as we're seeing. You know what I mean? Like a Billy Starks, like a, a Dante Martin, a Nick Wayne, all these guys that are 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, and they're already 
at the level they're at, it's just, it's wild to see. And I think they're lucky too, though, because uh, like around where you guys are, there's so many companies that are, that are doing really good things. There's a ton of, of like good level indie companies and there's a lot of, of ways to stream things Mm -hmm. and a lot of places to work. Whereas like around where we are, there isn't a lot of companies. So, you know, there was, there was years where a lot of our guys were getting one match a month. Yeah, and now and now we're starting to see. I, I was talking to to Mars the specialist, and I think coming up he's got a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and that's awesome because those reps just help you get better and better. And I think that's one of the things that that those Northeast guys are lucky because there's so many places to work and they can get you know three, four, five matches a week. Yeah, it's it's really a booming which, time. For before them, we awesome. get you, because we're getting close on that. That was I always ask um, when we have the Canadian talent on the show. It it does seem no, like we it, don't say a. A, no, that's not real. Well, but we'll, we'll finish off with this point, and then we'll get everybody out of here, and we're going to decide who we want to raid tonight um, on the Twitch side of things. But it feels like Canadian wrestling gets slept on considering its rich history and how much influence it has If over the entire sport. It always feels slept on. And you mentioned it, how there's not a lot of promotions up mm-hmm. where you're at, but like there's there's at least four independent promotions in my city right now alone. I think part of it is geography because Canada's just kind of so big and so spread out. Uh, it was it was rough before the pandemic, but once the border closed, it, it got even harder. But I think a lot of it is just like a flight, a flight from here to a, to a city in the states. A promoter's not going to want to risk that maybe on on somebody that's that's not necessarily well known, and you'd have to get in your car and drive for for X amount of miles. So I think geography has a lot to do with it, but there's so much talent up here that, that and that's one of the things that I really respect Spencer for is he's giving them a platform with the, with the Twitch stream worldwide, and he always says we're trying to push this Canadian talent and really just get them out there because there's so many guys and, and ladies here that are so good. Mm. I want to see all my friends on cable TV. Yeah. Yeah, Hell I would yeah. like to see a lot of them on cable TV too. Yeah, I don't want me on cable TV too. Oh yeah, friends, of course. Yeah, my but friends like, first. I, yeah, yes. I want to. I want to. Freddie you know, Fritz, baby. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, I, as like I said earlier, like me and Plugo being involved with Love Wrestling, we've been subjected to more of these performers being involved with subjected. this. Subjected. No, but in a, I meant that. I, in a know, good way. I know. You know. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I know. <laughs> you but, see um, the socials? We can't avoid yeah, it. No. Yeah, no, no. But like, I want to see more of these people, and you know. Unfortunately for someone like me who lives in the States, a lot of times the only way that I get to see some of these people now, luckily we've been streaming like our own shows and things mm-hmm. like that, which is nice, but I don't, I don't get to go find an MRB man. You know, I can find it probably on YouTube or something like that, but like, I don't get to watch them regularly live. So the only way that I would get to see that is if they do get that break and they do get yeah. a small run or something, or maybe AEW brings them in for a couple dark mat, whatever, however it works, you know what I mean? So starting to see these performers on our own love pro wrestling and kind of diving in and watching more of their stuff on YouTube and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I want to see these people on my American television so I can watch them regularly and get to know them more and watch them more and just grow as a fan of theirs. Yeah, you know? There was so. a few years ago where the UK scene got really, really hot and everybody was all after like the, 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 you know, the Ospreys and the, the yeah. Marty Skrulls and all those guys. And I'd like to see that happen here. It's like, it's like Seattle, one band gets signed and everybody wants a band. I want to see like one guy right. break through and all of a sudden they want to take all our guys yeah. and girls. Yeah. And that's that the, be the beautiful part about independent wrestling. And that's why I love supporting it is because you never know who you're going to stumble across, you know, and then all, and I, and I love that Spencer's got this promotion going and we're seeing all this new talent and it's fun to type in a Mitch Clark when we're doing research and going, Oh wow. Look at all these cool matches I can find of Mitch Clark. And now I can't wait to see what he does next or a Michael Richard blaze or Travis Williams, all these fun mm-hmm. people that he got coming down the, down the pipe. But, it is uh it is that time. We've been here for a solid two hours. Yeah, thank you so with much big for bad boys, yeah. our boy. This yeah. was a blast. I'll do this anytime. You are welcome yeah, anytime, my friend. Welcome, so uh, welcome. the door is always open. So why don't you tell us where the people can find you, what you got going on? I know you do a podcast, you got commentary. Let us know. 
I'll do it super quick just because I assume we're running out of time. But you can find me on uh, the Twitter at BB Boris. You can find me on the Instagram at BB Boris One. I do have a podcast. It's called Punk and Pod Drivers. Combines my love of music and my love of wrestling. I have my friends on from the local wrestling scene. We talk about their careers and I have them pick songs that they like and we play them. Oh, and I also play cool. some of my favorite punk rock songs because I love punk rock. I wanted to do something a little different than just a podcast. So that's really cool. There's a new episode coming out tomorrow with Mars the Specialist. You can find that on my social media media awesome. favorite that favorite punk band go uh i'm tied between uh, old school new york punk you got to go with the ramones and i'm a big big bad religion guy oh okay. bad religion right on, right on. we All can right. we can spill over spencer's money yeah well, uh, we're believe. big music people too so you know yeah um well spencer actually putting you on the spot boris I, uh he's gonna have you pick who <laughs> we're gonna be rating uh, on Twitch, once we this sign is the off, part where you tell me what that means, okay, and I'll be happy so to help. When so we're all on of Twitch, our viewers, we're gonna send them over exactly. You, you can raid oh, someone, oh, so okay. once your thing views, it just sends all your viewers to another stream. Oh, I don't, so, I don't, I don't know. So it says, <laughs> Yeah, it says, Let's let our guest pick, uh, and then we have our options. I'll let Alex hit the buttons. Those oh, are there's buttons, options, but okay, good. There are options, all right. Um, so we have Mia Yim, oh, okay. Mia Yim. we have Rick Jules. And then we have putting you over. So what we is, have me. What is putting you over? Putting you over our it's friends. They're uh, they, yeah, they stream live on Thursday nights as well. They yeah, are yes. Um, they talk wrestling. Yeah, talk wrestling. Wrestling. You All know. Right, I pick those guys. All right. There you go. So Boris we got Big fucking. Bad Boris is picking putting you over. So stay tuned. Once we kind of say our goodbyes. Um, Lots of reasons we love Boris and the Ramones Bad Religion combo solidifies that. One of yes. my favorite things about the Love Wrestling shows, too, is the playlist that's going on while the ring. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. It's tremendous. Spencer, uh, and I'm sure a lot of you guys, you know, you guys and girls. Yeah. But Spencer, one of the things when I got to, like, meet him physically for the first time and just become friends with him is uh, he's got a good taste in music. We have a, When you were you know, subjected I, to him? Yeah, subjected to him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh uh, no! Sorry. No, it's good. He's actually going to live with me forever now. Damn it. Yeah, he hired no, us. No. He I meant that positively. But anyway, Boris, thank you so much for hopping on and staying the whole time. We appreciate you. This was a lot of fun. So it anytime in the future, Absolutely. anytime in the future, you want to come on and talk some more wrestling or some more love for wrestling. Hell you yeah. just give up. You are always welcome, my friend. You give yeah, us you a, a holler and we'll get you on here. This was a and lot of fun. Tell Thanks, Thaddeus, guys. tell Thaddeus we'll we'll make time for him too. You see oh, yeah. Bomb, but you yeah, we'll get spot. anybody. Anybody wants to come on, you um, we'll like, get them all on here. Has if they want, cause but. a rift with uh, you and Thaddeus Archer there because he's, he's like, ride, oh, he's riding my coattails. Is yeah, that what exactly. it is? Okay. <laughs> but we're gonna quickly sign off because right after us, like I said, the most extensive and best MLW coverage in the game, Major Love Wrestling with Papa Smokes and Bobby Munson is about to go down so for me i am plugo at plugo underscore on twitter facebook instagram tiktok twitter all over the place you can find us at between two beards at b2 beards on facebook twitter tiktok instagram we're taking over the world we're going to be all over social media this weekend clipping things out talking wrestling who knows what's going on jpj tell the people where you can find you so we can get out of here and enjoy some major love wrestling yeah, uh, you can find me right here at Joseph underscore Poolin Jr. on the Twitter. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook at JPJ Loves Wrestling and on Twitch at JPJ Loves Wrestling. But you can find me here every Wednesday night for All Elite Sidecast where we mm -hmm. watch along AEW Dynamite. And you can find me and Plugo and whenever we have special guests like Big Bad Boris here at 8 p.m. every Thursday night right here on Love Wrestling. On the flagship. On baby. the flagship between two beards. Next Friday, you can find Big Bad Boris and a whole great card of professional oh, can't wrestling. Wait, can't wait for love. And the for box is five. coming, and the box week. will be coming on next week to promote Ooh. to go over the card in more detail. He always pops on the night before the shows with us, so that should be fun. So until next week, same time, same channel. Hang on here for Major Love Wrestling when that comes on. But for Plugo, for our guest, Big Bad Boris, I am JPJ. Peace out. Peace. Peace. Freddie, call us. Yes. <laughs>